and they beat Florida State 34-17. Now, the chief engineer was sophomore quarterback Steve Taylor. He was sensational. Taylor dazzled Florida State and the nation as he rushed for 139 yards, had a hand in four touchdowns. Two by land, two by air. But the Huskers' real strength is on defense, led by All-American nose guard Danny Noonan, who, with his four sacks, was named Defensive Player of the Week for the Big Eight. Now, Illinois head coach Mike White must get a great performance from quarterback Shane Lamb, who struggled last week against USC in only his second start, and from wide receiver Stephen Pierce if he hopes to slow down the Big Red machine. Tonight, it's the Midwest at its best. Nebraska meets Illinois. Network Television presents Super Football Saturday Night. Tonight, it's the sixth-ranked Nebraska Cornhuskers against the University of Illinois Fighting Illini. Brought to you by Buick and your Buick dealers. For comfort, innovation, and a real commitment to quality, it's today's Buicks. And by Coors and Coors Light. Beers with a difference worth tasting. Hello again, everybody. Along with Paul Horning, I'm Skip Carey, and we welcome you to Memorial Stadium in Champaign, Illinois, where the Illini will host the Corn Huskers of Nebraska. Nebraska is a big favorite in this game, Paul. One of the reasons is their outstanding middle guard, Danny Noonan. He's a monster. I tell you, Skip, I think Danny Noonan is a lot like most every Nebraska All-American in the past. He can bench press the Student Union building. He's six foot four, 280 pounds. And I tell you, he's a great football player. He's not only going to be an All-American again this year, he's going to be the number one draft choice in, for some team in the NFL draft. They compare him to Tony Casillas, who was the second pick in the NFL draft a year ago, so you know he has to be a good one on offense. This kid, Steve Taylor, the young quarterback, really got it done against Florida State. Well, as you saw in the opening, folks, as Skip said, what a sensational only 269 yards. There he is, number nine. He's a sophomore from San Diego, can throw the football. He's very quick. He likes to run the option. If Illinois is going to have a chance defensively, they must stop this young man throwing and passing. As we said, Illinois is a big underdog. They have a motion on their side. Dick Butkus' number being retired. A capacity crowd, their 23rd straight. And they're going to be fired up. Also, they played a game last week, even though they lost it, and Nebraska was idle. They played a very tough team in Southern California. They gave them a game until the fourth quarter. They've got to throw the football. They had Jack Trudeau last year. They could throw it with anybody. This year, he's gone. They've got Shane Lamb. They're trying to run the football a little bit more. They're not going to be able to run the football against Nebraska. Shane Lamb must have. There you see him. He must have an outstanding night. And by that, Skip, I mean, he's got to throw the football for 250 or 300 yards for them to be in it. Doug DuBose lost for Nebraska, a great running back, but they've got a kid back there now they say is the fastest they've ever had. Doug DuBose is one of the great backs in America. He's gone, but he tore up his knee terrible. Now they've got Keith Jones. They say this kid's the fastest eye back they've ever had. He runs the 40 in 4.33. And Skip, when I used to run the 40, it was about four minutes and four and a half minutes. This kid can fly. Of course, when you ran it, it was prior to the Civil War, too. So. <laughs> That's right. Tell you what, we should have a good ball game tonight. We're looking forward to it. Let's switch back to Kevin Slayton and see what's going on elsewhere. All right, Skip, thank you very much. And elsewhere, a lot of last-second field goal action deciding some big ball games. Let's go to Athens, Georgia, and pick that one up on the last play of the game. Clemson comes through with a big upset. David Treadwell has the Bulldog looking on before a packed house. Four Do the opening lineups, or are you going to wait? We're back at Memorial Stadium, which is also called Zupke Field. He was the great coach here for many years. This is where Red Grange ran wild. Here come the Illini. Red Grange, the Gallaby Ghost number 77. We've got a picture of him later on. He's still. Yeah, he is some kind of figurehead back here at Illinois. And Butkus, now the only second jersey they're going to retire. We'll have a little word with Dick. He'll be up in the booth a little bit later on. He's pretty happy man I talked to him before the game skip Dick Buckus and he is very very happy about this honor tonight Illinois coached by Mike White in his seventh year there overall 76 58 and 3 41 28 and 2 as the head coach of the fighting Illini as we mentioned a capacity crowd around 76,000 the 23rd 
consecutive Illinois sellout. It's Cork Day as well. I tell you what, they've got at least 10,000 fans from Nebraska. And I've always said this, Skip. I don't know of any other school that more fans travel every game with the Nebraska team. Everywhere you go when they play in Minnesota, it's the biggest weekend in Minnesota for the merchants because Nebraska brings their people. They are loyal and they follow the Big Red and Nebraska football is king. So both teams have taken the field. The captains are meeting. And we'll be right back. Buick deferred to the second half, so Illinois will receive. Daryl Usher, Ray Wilson of the deep men, Dale Klein will kick it off for the Cornhusker. Illinois one and one for the year, Nebraska one and oh. And we're about to get it on from Memorial Stadium in Champaign. Klein kicks it off. It's high and very, very short. Fair catch on this. It's fielded by Ray Wilson, who gets to the 28-yard line and is out of you can fair catch a kickoff, by the way, folks. But anyway, that was a very short kick. Cleo Miller ran him out of bounds. Your officials for this game, your referee John Laurie from the Big 8, umpire Dan Davey from the Big 10, your linesman Ron Demery from the Big 8, line judge Ron Winter, Big 10, field judge Terry Turlington of the Big 8, side judge Glenn Fortin of the Big 10, back judge Mike Nevin of the Big 10. You look at Illinois' offensive line. Shane Lamb is the quarterback. He's going to go to the air early. He's got a man, and it's intercepted. At the 35 to the 30, it's going to be a touchdown. On the first play of the game, Brian Davis out of Phoenix made the interception and took it in. Darrell Usher had an easy pass to catch the flanker. They went four receivers right away, Skip. The ball should have been caught by the flanker, Darrell Usher, a junior from San Mateo, California. It bounced right out of his hands, right into the hands of that man, number 32, Brian Davis, a senior from Phoenix. Watch this. This pass should have been caught. But after the deflection, it was history. And then Brian Davis just cuts back the first play of the game, and Nebraska is at six points. Cleet Blakeman will hold it for Dale Klein. Ooh. Unbelievable, huh? What an opening. Boy, and that'll take the crowd out of the game a little bit, too. A jam-packed stadium, but they're silent now as on the very first play from scrimmage, Nebraska on defense scores a touchdown. We'll look at it one more time. 36-yard return. Now watch. He gets pretty good protection. They had four wide receivers in the game. A little hook pattern right here. The ball looked like it was a little bit high, but he didn't have to jump that high, folks. That's Darrell Usher. It deflected off of his hands right into Brian Davis's arms. He just made an easy 36-yard jump for six points. So here we go again. Nebraska will kick it off once more with a 7-0 lead. We have played 12 seconds. 14-48 left first quarter. Again, Klein will kick it off. And you, if you're playing a team, of course, you're three touchdowns favorite in this ball game. Tom Osborne is saying, well, I hope our kids are up on the bit. They've been off two weeks. They had almost an easy time with Florida State, a 17-point win. The players anxious to play, and all of a sudden, they get a big break right off the bat, Skip. And that really takes, as you said, that'll take the wind out of the sails of this hometown crowd. Archer and Wilson are the deep men. Klein will kick it off again. Paul Horn and Skip Carrier. What do you from? Champaign, Illinois. Klein hits it a little better this time. It's Darrell Usher crossing the 20. Boy, is he upended as he hits the 25. And down at the around the 27-yard line. Brad Tyre, a defensive end out of Kansas City, made the stop. A 14-yard return. And Illinois sets up shop again. Mike White has to be upset for the way this thing started, but now he has to rally his troops. He's got to hang in there. The First play Illinois called was a good one. Skip, the man was wide open. They had four receivers out. Darrell Usher came on the inside, did the little hook pattern, was wide open, should have been caught. Usher flanks to the left, eye formation for the Illini. Shane Lamb is the quarterback. 3 4 defense for Nebraska. The pitch is to the eye back. Ray Wilson, nope, nothing. Maybe lost the yard. You're looking at pretty fair defense, folks. Against Florida State, they only gave up eight first downs. 
Chris Bachman made the stop. And there's a look at that Nebraska defensive line. Noonan is the best of a very, very good group. Major your linebackers on the inside and they're good ones. Your defensive secondary, Brian Siebler, is supposedly one of the best. Again, Darrell Usher flanks wide left. It's second down and about nine and a half. Double tight ends if they've got to we went offsides. Play is halted. Illinois jumped too soon. They're using two tight ends. Uh, I think Mike White told us this morning hey, we're going to go with two tight ends early in the ball game, hoping to keep Nebraska at home. Uh, illegal procedure, as you see. So the start hasn't been good for the Illini here. Mistakes early, and you cannot make too many mistakes against a team like Nebraska. They're going to call it second and 14. Offense at the 23 yard line. Tom Osborne and his staff. And he's out here running laps yesterday. He keeps in pretty good shape. He's a jogger. They run about four or five miles at a good pace, too. He's in shape. And they flood the left side with receivers. And Lamb is going to try to throw. Now he's going to try to run, and he is Derek at the 22 yard line. And a fumble, and the ball is recovered by Nebraska. Nobody was open, or it could have been a quarterback draw. It could have been a call play. They had a triple left set up, and he coughs up the football, and Nebraska gets it back. I think it was Broderick Thomas, the sophomore from Houston, who got it, number 89. Here's Shane Lamb. He, he's back. He's trying to throw the football, and he's got it a little bit loose, and he did cough it up. The ball was fumbled before he hit the ground. Good call by the referee. And Broderick Thomas, number 89, a sophomore from Houston, 6'2", 235, he got it. Lee Jones is the guy who forced the fumble, and Nebraska's offense handles the ball for the first time. Keith yeah. Jones with it, and he almost broke it. Down to the 15, 14, 13-yard line. What an opportunity for Keith Jones. Doug DeBose went out with that knee. Here's Keith Jones, a junior from Omaha. Take a look at the offensive backfield and receivers. Steve Taylor, fine sophomore quarterback there. Feature. Ed White out of Decatur, Georgia, the free safety, made the stop for Illinois. And that folks, so it's a big offensive lineman. We'll get to that in a little bit. Second and one at the 13-yard line. They're in the eye. And the give again is to Keith Jones, and he's got the first down and plenty of change down to around the seven. So it'll be first and goal at the seven for Nebraska. Again, Ed White made the stop for Illinois. Now we're going to look at a Keith Jones at Nebraska. He's the eye back. They also have a Keith Jones in uh, as we look at the defensive line for Illinois, they've got a offensive back for Illinois, a fullback named Keith Jones. So we've got two Keith Jones in the game tonight, but this one is possibly one of the best. He's the quickest kid ever to play at Illinois. There he is, number six, the deep man now. First and goal, Steve Taylor is the quarterback, and there he's changing it, Skip. He's changing the play at the line. Again, he gives it to Jones. He breaks one tackle. And he's pulled down at the six-yard line. Again, Ed White made the stop, the free safety. Give him about a short two. He got 67 yards, Keith did, on 17 carries in the first game against Florida State as you look at that fine young quarterback who was, I guess, the offensive player of the week in the United States as far as most polls are concerned. There's his stats throwing the football against Florida State. Not bad. And he also ran the football for a 139 and two touchdowns. Jason Gamble is split wide left. A wing back and an eye formation. Here's this time Taylor with the option, and he is going to get the touchdown. He's unreal. I'll tell you, he's that's the play. And he's untouched. That is the play that you must stop. You're going to beat Nebraska. Steve Taylor, you saw him move down on the little triple option there. He can also hand it off for the fullback. That's the first option. Watch this. Here's the first option. He fakes it. Now he can option to run or pitch the ball back to Keith Jones. Look at there. He gets in before he's touched. Ken Kalen, his fullback, gave him a great block. So did Rob Maggard and Stan Parker up front. Third touchdown of the year for Mr. Jones, um, Mr. Taylor. Klein kicks out of Blakeman's hold, and it is good again. 12.43 left. This is Super Football Saturday night on Turner Network Television. Right here, you're taking a look at the best sophomore in the country running the football from that QB position. This is Steve Taylor. Cuts back up inside, untouched. Great blocking up front, Skip. Usher 
And Wilson, the deep man, Klein is kicking off again. It's 14 nothing. We have 12:43 left in the first quarter, and the crowd is stunned here in Champaign-Urbana. Dale Klein out of Seward, Nebraska. Hits this one pretty well. Daryl Usher handles it at the seven. He's at the 20, has a little seam, and splits it to the 33-yard line. Jeff Tomjack made the stop, the junior out of Ewing, Nebraska. 26-yard return. Here's a look at the second Nebraska touchdown drive. Two turnovers have been very costly for Illinois. This about cuts their throat early. First and 10 at the 28. They wanted to mix the run in with the pass, but the way it started, boy, they may have to just throw caution to the wind. Keith Jones out of Rock Hill, Missouri, is the running back. He's joined now by Ray Wilson, Shane Lamb, the quarterback. And he gives to the second man. It's Wilson trying to get outside. No chance. Look at that pursuit. Braderick Thomas led the charge at around the 30-yard line. Boy, this has got to be a little bit dispiriting. A gain of... We'll give him three. Mike White saying, what are we going to do here, folks? We can eat a first down. Here's some scores for you. 14 to 7. Jerry Faust hasn't lost yet at Akron. Texas A&M 6-0 over North Texas State first quarter. Two tight ends in there, Jerry Reese and Anthony Williams. Second down play, Lamb again gives to Ray Wilson, and he's got nowhere to go. Tony Holloway, the right end out of Bellevue, Nebraska. Very light for a defensive lineman. It's 205 pounds. Used his quickness to slow the play up. It's a loss of a yard, and it's third and eight at the 30. Ten starters are for Nebraska offensively and defensively in that Nebraska starting lineup. Cornhusker defense. Got six starters returning. As I said, they only gave up eight first downs total to Florida State. So this is, again, a fine defense. Stephen Pierce flanks right, split left. James Gordon on third down play. Shane Lamb tries the draw and nothing. Keith Jones out of Rock Hill, Missouri, got the ball. Again, Tony Holloway is in on the stop. The crowd boos. They wanted to pass, but they tried to surprise him, and it didn't work out. Oof. They're not going to surprise that offensive line. But they're just going to try to test it early, and I know Mike White knows that he's not going to get too much up front. Chad Little will kick it. You see his statistics. Dana Brinson is the deep man for the Cornhusker. He might get a, quite a workout before the night's over with, Mr. Little. Boy, does Nebraska look awesome. Good kick. Brinson is fading back to the 25. Has it there. Gets to the 30, to the 33-yard line before he's knocked down. Nebraska will set up shop from the 33-yard line, and we'll be right back. <laughs> Nebraska will have it first and 10 at their 33-yard line as play resumes here. The give is to the up man. The fullback, Kalen, crosses the 40-yard line, and he's down at the 41. Jay Lynch made the stop. We've got some audio problems up here that we're trying to get straightened away. There we go, second down. Three yards to go. Taylor rolls left, but he gives it to Keith Jones, who breaks a tackle, crosses the 50, and is down to the 46-yard line. Lance Harkey made the stop for it Illinois. It looks as if Keith Jones is in for a good night. 13-yard pickup. Stan Parker, Rob Maggard on the left side. Two great blocks. Look at this hole over here. And Keith Jones does the rest here. That's Ed White coming up to put the first hit. He breaks that tackle. Keith Jones, 13-yard pickup. First in. At the 46-yard line, first and 10. There's Jones again. He vaults one man, but gets only to the 45, only a yard. Second and nine at the 45-yard line. Ed White tripped him up, that free they, safety. This kid has been timed 4.33 in the 40-yard dash, and that's as quick as they come. Second down, nine yards to go.
tough. 5'10", 190 pounds. Dana Brinson is split wide to the right. Steve Taylor is the quarterback, and he rolls left and looks to throw, and throws incomplete. Over the head of his split end, Rod Smith, down around the 30-yard line. Good coverage by Lance Harkey, the de defensive right cornerback over there for Illinois. And look at this. The fans are happy about this. So don't tell me it's an incomplete pass. That's a kind of a facetious response, I would say. Yeah, they weren't very ambiguous no. about it, either. <laughs> Third down, nine yards to go. It's a possession play. Taylor rolls. Taylor looks. Taylor throws. I think it's complete to Rob Snitzler, but way short of a first down at the 40-yard line. Now he was very lucky with that football. He should have ate the football, as we say. Took the loss. That was a very dangerous pass to throw. It could have been intercepted. It was ruled at completion. It's still going to be way short of the first down. Now watch this. He's coming out to the right. Everybody's covered. He should not have thrown this football. This is what a quarterback has to learn just to eat the football. He threw it off balance, and luckily it was caught. There's an Illinois defender right there, and a little bit off target. That would have been an interception. Fourth down, and about and about four and a half yards to go. John Croker is in the game to kick it away. And now play is haunted here. Too much time. Delay a game against Nebraska. That doesn't really bother them in this spot. Lance Harkey was the deep man. Let's see how they play it now. They're going to change it around. And Darrell Usher comes into the game to play deep. They kept Harkey in there because they really didn't weren't at all sure that Nebraska was going to kick. But now after the penalty they are convinced that they will. Offense. Eight minutes, eight seconds left first quarter. Paul Horning, Skip Carey with you from Memorial Stadium in Champaign, Illinois. Turned out to be a beautiful night here. We had some rain this morning. Duke over Ohio. Louisville. Oh, man, I'd like to see my man, Hart Schnellenberger, win a game. That's the first points they scored all year long. Two games. There's the boot by Croker. They'll cover this one. They should cover it. They oh, can't. they did very poor coverage. Number 40 had a beautiful shot at downing the football. That's John Kelly, inside linebacker from Lincoln. He should have kicked that football right away. He should have touched it. Well, Illinois needs to get something going if they can. First and 10 at the... 20-yard line. Shane Lamb leads them out of there. They are going against some defense. They just line up in that 3-4 defense, Skip. Nothing real. Gotta beat, but you know. Play it right. It looks as if it's going to be the big two conference again. Oklahoma and Nebraska, and that's going to be a, some kind of game. Even now, you can even start talking about it. The fullback gets the ball and drives to the 34-yard line. Keith Jones. A couple of reserve linemen, Larry Pete and Neil Smith, made the stop. They keep telling us that Oklahoma may be the best ever they've ever had. If anybody's got a shot, I would think that Nebraska would match up. They've matched up with them for a long time. Second and seven at the 23-yard line. Nebraska playing a lot of people here with a 14-nothing lead. And that matchup, I guess, could be said the same thing for, you know, Oklahoma. They're the only team that could match up with Nebraska over the years, too. There's a very meaningful stat. Lamb to throw a little look in is incomplete. It was intended for Stan Fitt out of Chicago, but the pass was not really well thrown. No, the timing on the play was poor. The receiver was too close to the line of scrimmage. He wasn't deep enough. And that pass was poorly thrown too low. It's a dispirited group of Illini. They need a break or something to get them fired up again. It's third and seven at the 23 with seven minutes left in the first quarter. This passing offense has got to be much better sync if they're going to move the football skill. Darrell Usher and Stephen Pierce split to the left. The tight end Anthony Williams now lines up on that side. They flood left. Lamb is in some trouble and he is going to be thrown and the ball is free. There's a penalty flag. flags are down. Look like perhaps a face guard, but we'll wait and see about all that. Look like Neil Smith may have gotten his hand on the face guard as he. Yep. Tried to bring down the quarterback. It was Neil Smith. He was very close to the sack. Let's see if he got that face mask. Yep. So the penalty is against Nebraska. 
that will at least allow Illinois to keep possession for another play. They mark it at the 28, and it will be third and two from there. Defensive face mask. And again, a possession play for the Atlanta. They're at the 28-yard line, 6.51 left, first quarter. Jerry Reese checks back into the Illinois lineup. And Ray... Jerry Reese caught four passes last week, four on the season. Had a pretty good game against Southern California, Skip. He's a good tight end. Wilson and Jones, the running backs. Number six, he likes to go to him. Of course, they're going to try to get it running the football here. This is Wilson. He gets the first down and a little more to the 33. And he beat Brian Siebler, the senior from Fremont, Nebraska. Wilson and Siebler man-to-man -man, almost at the line of scrimmage, and the backs got the edge there from the safety coming up to try to make the tackle. We're going to get a good shot from the end zone here. Watch Wilson here, and you'll see number 19, Brian Siebler, the safety man, come up right here. He's got a shot, and the offensive back definitely has the edge. He made the tackle, but he got the first down. Stephen Pierce is wide to the left. Daryl Usher splits right. The give to the running back. It's the fullback, and it's Keith Jones, and he pounds out across the 40-yard line. Larry Pete, a reserve middle guard out of Wichita, Kansas, makes the stop. Danny Noonan gets a rest on the Nebraska sideline. That's the other Keith Jones I was telling you about. He's from Rock Hill, Missouri. Just outside St. Louis. They you mark it at the 35. It'll be second and eight from there. You grew up in St. Louis, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. Right by Rock Hill, as a matter of fact. Darrell Usher, wide right. The backs are split behind Shane Lamb. And the give is to Ray Wilson. And he has stopped shy of the 40-yard line. Again, Larry Pete in on the play, calling his number a, a lot tonight. And Jay Lynch, a linebacker, helped out. So it'll be third down from the 38-yard line, third and about five. Clock ticks with five minutes left in the first quarter of play. Usher to the left, Stephen Williams to the right. Lamb's going to throw for it. He had a man, but he missed it. Boy, he was wide open, too. It was Stephen Pierce. There he is. He was wide open, passed a little off target. They got him right on the beautiful move back to the inside. That was Brian Washington, number five. He had the up coverage. They split the zone. The ball poorly thrown or would have been caught. Could have been a big gainer. Dana Brinson is deep. Chad Little will kick it. His first kick was for 47 yards. This will be number two. Illinois can't get much going. Another good kick. Brinson is going to let this one hit. And it will bounce around at the 22-23 yard line. This is Super Football Saturday night on Turner Network Television. Kevin Slayton here in our studios in Atlanta updating some scores for you before we go back to Champaign. Arizona, the 11th. Okay, Kevin, thank you very much. Here it's first and 10 at the 22 for Nebraska. Nebraska's outrushed Illinois 43 yards to 10. Rod Smith is wide to the left. The give is to Keith Jones. He's at the 30. He's at the 40. Kiss it goodbye. Can anybody catch him? Absolutely not. It's 20 to nothing. A 78-yard touchdown run. Boy. Tom Welter, John McCormick threw the blocks to spring him, and it's a route. Unbelievable. Keith Jones, they said he got 4-3 speed. You saw it, folks. What much to say, just great blocking around the right side. My goodness, they just cleared everybody out, Skip. And listen, I tell you, there's nothing much for me to say, folks. I'm just going to sit back and watch it with you because watch the blocks coming up. Oh, there it is right there. And he's, it's history now. 78-yard touchdown run. 427 left. That's Jason Gard. Klein's kick from Blakeman's hold is good again. 
And Nebraska couldn't look any better than they do. We'll be right back. Credit the big block to Kevin Leitner for Nebraska. Buick. Here's Let's the get, touchdown play again. Right, watch key, watch 57 out in front if we can catch it. Ooh, just knocked him right outside. Knocked the cornerback Keith Taylor out. That was Kevin Leitner, and of course, Keith, uh, Keith Jones with 4-3 speed. Just made it look easy. Ray Wilson, Darrell Usher, the deep man. Dale Klein will kick it off. Pretty good uh, rushing average, wouldn't you say? Not bad. That's 16 yards a pop. It's a slaughter so far, folks. Daryl Usher will field it at the nine-yard line. They need to break one themselves, and they just about do. Ball Bobble. is loose. Nebraska's got it again at the 35-yard line. Third turnover for Illinois, and Mr. Usher coughs it up again. He missed the first pass of the game off his hands for six points, and now on a kickback, he coughs up the football. Cleo Miller caused it, and we think Brian Davis recovered it. Well, there's Daryl Usher on the kick. Now, he's running hard, folks. He really is. He gets hit. There's the football. It is a fumble. It's live. And, of course, Nebraska all over the football. And it's Brian Davis, number 32, who intercepted the pass off of Daryl Usher in the first quarter. Steve Taylor from the 35 leads him out. He's going to throw for it. He's chased out of the pocket, throws on the run, he's batted away incomplete. It was intended for Von Shepard. Ed White broke it up, the free safety, who has been about all there's been to talk about for Illinois tonight. Von Shepard won a little flag on this when he didn't get it. Low angle replay, here he goes around the right side on the run. Von Shepard comes right down, incomplete, almost intercepted Great. On, the, on the deflection. Great camera work by our crew, but that's no surprise. They're the best in the world. Jason Gamble, wide left. In the world? I think so. All oh, right. Look at this. Uh -oh, a little razzle dazzle. Look at this in reverse. They got some people. Princeton is at the 25. The 20 makes a great cut. He's down at the 16 yard line. Dana Brinson out of Valdosta, Georgia, on the double reverse picks up 19 yards. Valdosta, Georgia. Where'd they get him from? How about this? 20 yard pickup on the reverse. Got a great offense. Here comes the tailback. That's John Kelly. He hands it back. Beautiful, beautiful play. Dana Brinson, 20-yard pickup for Nebraska. From the 16, the Cornhuskers continue to roll. The give is for the fullback, and he pulls his way down inside the 10-yard line. You know, it's tough enough when you're coming in. When you're Illinois and you're coming up against Nebraska, it's tough enough if you play him a dead standoff all night long without any turnovers. It's tough enough to hold him within two touchdowns. But when you give up the football, three turnovers in the shadow of your goal line, I mean, you're looking at big points then. Micah Heibel was the runner on that play. He's a reserve fullback. 220-pounder out of Lincoln, Nebraska, where the university is located. Driving inside the five is John Kelly. He, too, out of Lincoln, a 6'1", 205-pound eye back. Neil Walner made the stop. Skip, Illinois uses the same defense as Nebraska. They use a three down lineman, four linebackers. We take a look at Tom Osborne, the Nebraska coach, over on the sidelines. But what happens offensively for Nebraska the offensive linemen are pushing the Illini about three yards off the line of scrimmage. This is like sitting ducks for running backs. They love this kind of game. Cleet Blakeman is in the game at quarterback. The give is to the fullback up the middle for a touchdown. Micah Heibel. This is men against boys. It really is. You feel badly for Illinois, but you sit here just awed by the performance of Nebraska. Heibel got the touchdown. And Blakeman will stay in to hold as Dale Klein will kick the point. Cleet Blakeman got the second unit in there now. This is Micah Heibel, junior from Lincoln. He goes in almost untouched till he got a yard deep into the end zone. Dale Klein will try the point. Cleet Blakeman will hold it. And it is. 28 to nothing, and we have 2.48 remaining 
in the first period of the game. And I'll tell you what, Paul, I, don't, I really don't know what to say. Now we know why Nebraska sends out a three deep that mo most teams, folks, you see, send out to the reporters, radio and TV. They send out two deeps. Nebraska brings, uh, they send you three deeps because they know they're going to score a lot of points. And their third team is going to see some action tonight, folks. Here's another replay. High ball. Blakeman right up the middle. A little trap blocking. He just goes in to hit somebody about the two-yard line. Holds him balance. Good run. Micah Heibel from Lincoln. In case you're wondering, Nebraska plays Oklahoma in Lincoln on November 22nd. And that may decide the national championship. It really might. It's too early to say that definitively. Alabama won a game today. Beat Florida. Big upset. Clemson beat Georgia by three, I understand. Baylor lost to Southern I, I was down in South Carolina all last week on some speaking engagements, and I want to tell you what a big win for Danny Ford. That's all those South Carolina people talk about South Carolina, of course, in Columbia and Clemson. And I tell you, the pressure started to build on Clemson. They haven't done too well between the hedges in the last 10 years. Ray Wilson, Darrell Usher are the deep man. It will be Darrell Usher at the nine again. He fumbled the last one. He gets to the 25, to the 30, and out to the 32, 33 yard line. But you don't want this kid to change his style. Now, he's caused two turnovers, Darrell Usher, but he's running hard, and that's what he's got to do, Skip. Just got to hang in there. Got it up. First and 10 at the 33 yard line. 241 remaining in the first quarter. Paul Horning, Skip Carey with you. We have witnessed an uh, awesome first awesome is, is the only. Only word for it. Last year when these two teams played, Nebraska led 24-10 at halftime, went on to win it 52-25. Shane Lamb gives to his fullback Keith Jones. He pulls his way to the 35, and it's thrown all the way back to the 30. Boy, they gang tackle. And when the first man stops the play, the second man gets to the running back, you'll see the linebackers, the safeties all come in and help on the tackle. They really swarm. Mark Munford out of Littleton, Colorado, a 230-pound linebacker was the first man to get to him. Second down, eight yards to go. Williams is wide right. Lamb barks signals. Lamb in the pocket. He's got time, and he airs it out, and he throws it incomplete. Brian Davis on the coverage. Stephen Williams out of Los Angeles, the intended receiver. And it's third and eight at the 35-yard line. Illinois can't do anything. They can't stop Nebraska, and they can't move it at all. Darrell Usher stand fit now in at the wideouts for Mike White's team. Third down, possession play. Stand fit, flanks to the right. Usher to the left along with Stephen Pierce in the slap left. Lamb to throw, and he's rushed, avoids one man. He's run out of the pocket. He throws on the run, and it is complete. He found Stan Fitt at the 44-yard line in Nebraska territory, 21-yard completion. 21-yard completion to Mr. Fitt. And now you bring these uh, Illinois fans up on their feet. We take a look at the packed house that's up the field. Here's Shane Lamb scrambling around the right side. He's going to get it downfield. Comes back for the football. Good catch. That is left foot and his right foot inbound. Danny Noonan is back in the game, and it was he that applied the pressure and ran him out of the pocket. But that should fire Lamb up a little bit. Stephen Williams wide right. Usher to the left. Lamb to throw again Flex, and again. Flex. He's chased out of the pocket. Running for his life, and he's thrown for a long loss. Uh -oh, uh oh There was a late hit over there. Didn't get a flag, though. Brad Tyrer ran him out of bounds. He's out of Kansas City, the left end. 12-yard loss. I tell you, I, I thought I saw a late hit over there. Let's see if we got it back. Got a ground-level shot here. He's being pressured. Now watch. There he's down. He's out of bounds. Now watch. Right here. Yeah, you could have thrown a flag oh, there. Oh, absolutely. That was Chris, Chris Spockman. Spockman. Yeah. Yeah, he could have held up. That was definitely, that should have been called. Second 19 on the 47th. James Gordon flanks to the left. We have a minute remaining in the corner to give us the fullback. Flags are flying. Keith Jones got a yard, perhaps two, and we'll wait to see what the officials decree. 
A gain of a yard, maybe two, but let's see what the penalty was all about. Offsides against Nebraska. That will, of course, be accepted, making it second and 14 at the 40, at the 49. There's the time remaining in the quarter. Greg Turner out of Galesburg, Illinois, checks into the game as fullback for Illinois. Keith Jones comes out. And now Stan Fitt returns to the Illini lineup. Offside, defense. Stephen Pierce Second is in back. there as well. And now Turner, who just came into the game, turns around and goes right back out. Jerry Reese comes back in for Illinois. Second down, 13 yards to go, they say, at the 48-yard line. It's two pretty tough teams to start off with before Big Ten play starts next week for Illinois. SC last week in Nebraska this week. Fitt and Gordon are the wideouts. Pierce in the slot. Shane Lamb is the quarterback. He fades to throw. Just a three-man rush, but a good one. They force him out of the pocket again. He has to run, and he's scrambled at the 44-yard line by Lee Jones, the right tackle out of Omaha. Danny Noonan was there as well. There's some Big Ten action on the day. Uh, Notre Dame. Got it again for Michigan State, a good football team. How about Northwestern? That's a big surprise. Unbelievable. We got it up? Northwestern won. We don't have it up there. Yes, we do. 25 yeah, to 18 Army. over Army. All right. Third down and about nine for the Illini. And the quarter has come to a close. First quarter is history. This is Super Football Saturday night right here on Turner Network Television. Portions of tonight's game being brought to you by Buick and your Buick dealers for comfort, innovation, and a real commitment to quality. It's today's Buick. The pass is complete to Stephen Pierce, and he fights his way all the way to the 30-yard line, and an Illinois first down. He got inside the 39. You see that little pat on the head, Charles Fryer. That's Urban Fryer's cousin. Playing a defensive back over here. Pass complete, 15-yard pickup. Here comes Fryer in to help on the tackle, number 10. Illinois is desperate to get something generated here. Ray Wilson and Greg Turner are the running backs in the game. Shane Lamb, the quarterback. Wilson has the ball, hurdles one man, and then really gets nailed at about the 27 by Mark Munford. It'll be second, and we'll wait and see where they mark it. Second and eight at the 27-yard line. Lee Jones helping out also, the big junior. Defensive right end from Omaha. First quarter stats, look at them. Reflects, I think, the 28 to nothing score, all Nebraska. If you're an Illinois fan, please don't get mad at us for bringing this up, but the worst defeat in Illinois history was back in 1906, 63 nothing to the University of Chicago. Just in case you wonder, Darrell Usher is wide to the left. Shane Lamb, under center. This is a second down play. The throw is complete, but for almost nothing, Darrell Usher made the catch at the 26. It'll be third and seven. They were trying to pop him free, but got Charles Fryer said yeah, no. He reacts a little bit too quick. They like that little hitch pattern out there, and usually Darrell Usher's got a little bit more time to react, but Charles Fryer was right on top of him. Mike White on the sideline. Third down, seven yards to go. Usher and Pierce are wide to the right. Williams to the left. Lamb to throw. He's got a man. A penalty flag is thrown. It's Usher at about the 23. He's driven back to the 25. Mark Munford with a hit. But let's see what the penalty is all about. Third down. Illinois could use a little help here. It's holding against Nebraska. It's automatic first down here. Got a replay here. Mark Mumford makes the hit on this completion. Let's take a look at. He's got that right arm in there, and I think that's why the flag was thrown. With Stephen Pierce on the reception. Ball wasn't thrown to him, but he was held up. Big penalty and a big break for Illinois. We think it was called on the left hand Brad Tyrer, but we're not sure. Before the pass. First down. 
An automatic first down, of course, and at the 14-yard line for Illinois. Darrell Usher splits left. Stephen Williams and Stephen Pierce to the right. Stephen Pierce got man and man right down the middle now. Lamb's quick pop, he threw it low. He intended it for Pierce, but he threw it at his feet. And Pierce couldn't come up. Just happened to have the wrong play called. And they had Pierce exactly what they wanted, a man-to-man -man with one of the safeties back there. And they had a short pattern on instead, instead of letting Pierce work man-to-man -man on the safety. Lamb is three out of eight now for 40 yards. 12.42 left in the first half. It's 28-0 Nebraska. They have looked at sensation. They really have. Second and 10, 14-yard line. Gordon splits to the left. High formation behind Shane Lamb. The pitch back is to Wilson. He circles wide at the 15, is hit and dropped at the 12. A gain of only two, and it's third and eight at the 12-yard line. Kevin Slayton's in Atlanta with an update. Kevin? Skip, look at this score. Washington, a strong case for them to be the second-ranked team in the country. They humbled BYU today. We'll have Washington next week against Southern Cal. What a showdown that'll be. Alabama knocked off Florida in Gainesville by two TDs, and Stanford beat San Jose State easily. Back to Skip in Champaign. Okay, Kevin, thank you very much. It's third down. Eight yards to go. The ball is at the 12-yard line. Shane Lamb will throw here. The quick look in to the eight-yard line. Look, even when they complete a pass, they get hit. Look at all those white jerseys all over. Stan, Stan fit. fit. I mean, he got popped by four guys. I tell you, they swarmed to the football. Great reacting defense you're looking at. Now, even though this is a nice pickup, they make you pay for the seven-yard pickup. Look at here. Four hits. It's fourth down and about three yards to go. Stephen Williams checks back in. Nebraska, rather, Illinois is not going to mess around for any field goal. Good for them, win or lose. Fourth down, possession play. Lamb to throw. He gets it away. Touchdown. Touchdown. Darrell Usher with check it. Jerry Reese with the reception. And Illinois gets on the board. Give them some credit. It would have been easy to take the three points. But they're going to try to come back and win this game. Absolutely. Three points is not going to help them. That might do something mentally for him. This was Jerry Reese, the second touchdown pass caught of the year. Kevin Land hangs right in there, and he finds Reese in the corner of the end zone over there. He's got it. Six points for the Alina. Now they'll try for the extra point. They triple team Danny Noonan, by the way, as you could see. Chad Little will hold it for Chris Salmon Bocas, and the kick is up, and the kick is good. And on the board are the Illini. It's 28-7. Nebraska will be right back. Third and final look at this touchdown. Levin, Lamb out to Jerry Reese, right in the corner of the end zone. He's wide open. Good pitch. Shane Lamb. Brian, Brian Youngins will kick it off. Von Shepard and Terry Rogers are the deep man. Rogers, the son of Johnny Rogers, the great Heisman Trophy winner at Nebraska some years back. It's 28-7. And here's the boot. Shepard fields it at the 20, 25, 30, one man to beat, 40, 45, 50, and down at the 47-yard line, and Nebraska comes right back at him. They can beat you with any play. 43-yard return as we take a look at number two, Von Shepard. Darren T. made the stop. Ed White slowed him up. Here it is Beautiful again. return, 43 yards. Look at the people up front. Look at that hole on the right side. We could have got Kerry through there. Makes a good <laughs> move. Cuts back to the inside, Mr. Shepard. And it's finally touchdown saving tackle by Darren T for Illinois. Steve Taylor back in the game at quarterback, and the give is to Keith Jones, and he powers his way inside the 45, down to about the 43 yard line. 
depending on how much time that Keith Jones is going to get to run the football, he's looking at a 200-yard night. He's already over 100 yards. Second and six at the 43. There's a where it is. What couple is that? of Illinois fans. I'm not going to say nothing. I'm not going to say anything either. <laughs> Jones seven for Correct. carries for 112 yards. Shepard, the man in motion. Taylor keeps. Gives now and breaking free inside the 30 down to the 26. Ken Kalen. He fumbled the ball, no. but I think it was blown dead. It was down. Can't fumble cannot be caused by the ground, by the turf, the artificial turf. He was down. Which I don't like this rule either. I think it's the responsibility of a running back to hold on to the football when his initial hit to the turf. I think he should be able to have to required to hold on to the football right here. He's down. And when he calls up that football right there, I like to think that that's a fumble. It was in the old uh, uh, schoolyard <laughs> when we were young, but they've changed it. The ground cannot cause a fumble. Timeout called here by Nebraska. They didn't have the proper play called for the defense they came up with, apparently. 28-7, our score that Nebraska leads. This is Super Football Saturday Night on Turner Network Television. For football Saturday night is brought to you locally by the people who make glass. There's the story, and Nebraska's on the drive again at the 26-yard line. They have it first and ten in Illini territory. Steve Taylor out of San Diego, the quarterback. What a good-looking young athlete he is. He gives on the reverse to Brinson, and he fights his way inside the 20 to the 19, perhaps the 18-yard line, a pickup of eight yards. It'll be second and two from the 18. Jay Lynch out of Oakland, California, the left outside linebacker, made the stop. Nebraska returns Von Shepard to their lineup. He takes Brinson's place. Shepard out of St. Paul, Minnesota. Georgia Tech and Virginia having a good one. And Penn State has scored first on B.C. Shepard and Smith to the left. Taylor rolls right. He's going to keep, but he gets very little this time. Good job on defense. Good job playing that option by James Finch, a senior from Indianapolis. They played it well that time. You've got to string out the option, and you've got to try to get the ball out of the hands of Steve Taylor. He's so dangerous. The quicker he gets rid of the football, the better chance you've got to stop with the option. Third and two at the 18. Now let's pause five seconds to allow our local stations to identify themselves. You're watching WTBS Atlanta. Third and two for the Husker. Quick pitch, running with the ball is Keith Jones, and I don't know if he got to the first down or not. Ed White tripped him up again, but White is having a super game. Steve Taylor winds up on the deck and gets up slowly. They mark it short of the first down. It'll be fourth then, about a yard. As they say, no problem. Here comes Von Shepard back. No three points here. They've got a three touchdown lead confidence in that big offensive line out of, out of the eye of the deep back. Now they shift the strong formation left. Fourth and a long one. Taylor keeps. He's got the first down. Pitches back. Keith Jones. He's inside the five. Fumbles it out of bounds. Bobby it's first and goal. Bobby Dawson skipped. Saved the touchdown there. Knocked Jones out. Did you see him exchange hellos? Low angle replay. You see Ed White here, number 16. He comes up. Gets the quarterback. He pitches it to Jones. There's Bobby Dawson knocking Jones out of bounds. They got the first down. He's a, Jones now 126 yards, nine carries. Boy, boy, what a night. Well, everybody's offensive off, offside. Look like Nebraska may have jumped first there. If so, it'll be first and goal at the nine. And the way Taylor is acting, it was his team that was guilty. That's what I like when you watch Oklahoma and Nebraska team. When it's second nine, it's not necessarily a passing situation. No, they're going to run the football. They're liable to get just as liable to get 23 yards running the football in second nine as anything. Let me ask you a question. This is just off the wall. If it were legal, if next week Nebraska could play, say, an average or a, uh, the Green Bay Packers, a team that's struggling a little bit, what would happen? Well. I think a good team like that, they would hold up, but I think the pro team would end up winning. Know, the game. winning. They're just a little bit more mature. 
uh, they wouldn't make the, the amount of mistakes. But a team effort could hold up for a while. Look at this. Kid. Taylor cuts back and powers his way very close to the goal line. Jay Lynch finally stopped him. And they're going to mark it at the two-yard line. It'll be second and goal there. That's what Paul was just talking about. First and they got a lot goal better, at the nine. They got a run. lot better chance now as we take a look at Steve Taylor. A great college team like Nebraska, Oklahoma, something like Miami. Got a lot better team uh, chance against a pro team today than maybe 15 years ago. So the kids are so much bigger today and stronger. Second and goal at the two. 7.36 left in the first half. There's a good look at young Steve Taylor. Jason Gamble is wide left for the Huskers. If they spread it around and give it to Jones. He's going to throw for it. Little timing pattern and it's overthrown in the end zone. Just good, good pass, uh, coverage by Ed White, number 16. The junior from Decatur, Georgia. Very good pass coverage. Willie Griffin out of Monrovia, California was the intended receiver. So it's third and goal from about the one and a half. Clock stop, 7.23. Remember, a lot of people don't remember the Tom Osborne. They know that he has a doctorate, but he's a pretty good pro football player for yes, three years. Yes, he was. He, what a great coach. And he took, what a great coach Devaney was. I tell you, those 10, 12. That 71 team was 13 to nothing. Game against Oklahoma was the best football game I've ever seen. Look at this. Keith Jones tiptoes into the end zone for the touchdown. Made it look easy. That's when you're really cocky and confident, Skip. You're throwing the football second one, just fooling around. You know you got it down. You're going to, you know, anytime you want to give it to the eye back, you know you're going to score. Nobody's going to push this offensive team back tonight, Illinois. No way. Let's take a look at Keith. Look, this. Do you ever see an easier touchdown? Look, look. He just. Boink. Very politely puts the ball down. I like to see that. Lakeman holds. Klein will kick. And it's now 35 7 as the kick is good and we'll be right back in Champaign Illinois. Hey listen why don't we just take take this thing to halftime and then replay the second half of the Michigan State game last week. <laughs> yeah, do they have the cable? Why not? We've lost our little monitor, by the way. Pretty girl looks on. But if she's an Illinois fan, she shouldn't be smiling. You see the score. Nothing you do now but smile. Pretty lady. Yay, verily. Usher and Wilson are the deep men for Illinois. Dale Klein will kick it off again. And here we go. We got prettier girls at the football games than you all got at the baseball games. Usher downs it in the end zone. Well, you certainly certainly have more of them here than we've had in Atlanta lately. <laughs> First and ten. Braves, by the way, won today. Beat the Giants 2-1 to even up that series. And you'll see the final game of it tomorrow on TBS. Clay Blakeman has been in the game once already. Right, he's a junior from Norfolk, Virginia. The most points Nebraska has ever scored. 119 against Haskell back in 1910. I bet you they don't score that many. Well, I want to tell you something. It's pretty tough to call off the hounds when you got this many good people. That's the trouble. The pass is complete. Stephen Pierce with it. A late hit by Nebraska as well at the 28-yard line. Lamb to Pierce. The late hit here. Blake Henning, number 39. Let's pick it up. Good completion. Stephen Pierce, 39's got the tackle. There's the hit right there coming in a double hit after Blake Henning made the stop. I can't pick up the number there, but it was definitely a late hit. It's going to go against the Cornhusk. A 15-yard penalty, and those are the kind of things that may not hurt Nebraska tonight, but somewhere along the line, 
That could really hurt them in a game with somebody like an Oklahoma. When you're a young football player, Skip, playing for a team like Nebraska or Oklahoma or the teams that pile up a lot of points, you're sitting over on the bench, you're more nervous, you know, because you know possibly you're going to get in that football game if you're on the fourth team. A fourth team player here will see some action, you know. Jerry Reese moves into the slot left. Shane Lamb back to throw. He's chased out of the pocket. He's in trouble, gets it away, and it'll be interference, but I think he made the catch anyway. Here's the beautiful catch, 11-yard pickup. Now, here's where I think this rule could be looked at. Now, this kid was interfered with. He made the catch. I think the penalty should be tacked on after the catch here. That's a good point. Boy, good move by Shane Lamb. He gets the foot. Now, here he was interfered with by number 28, and that's John Custer, the cornerback from Bellevue, Nebraska. Pressure was on Lamb again, as usual. Bradrick Thomas applied Bradrick it. Bradrick Thomas on the inside. And look what happens to Lamb. He paid the price. Now we always think pass interference should be automatic first down and the penalty if it's incomplete. But if it is complete, I think it should be. You should Maybe have it tack tacked on. on absolutely. I mean, it doesn't help him at all. He might as well made the catch and no interference. They don't get any uh, better play offensively out of it. Well, don't get mad at me. I'm hot. <laughs> First and ten at the 45 for Illinois. Texas A&M. They've got a good football program going. Here's what I was talking about, see? Naturally, they took the play, but penalty didn't help them a bit. Only helped them if they would have been incomplete. Williams and Pierce to the left. Usher to the right. It's going to be a reverse. Usher winds up with the football, and he's hit and dropped at the 44-yard line, a gain of only one. Tim Rother, a reserve right tackle from Bellevue, Nebraska, stayed home and made the spot. Second nine at the 44. Good play by Tim Rother here, defensive tackle on the inside. Looks like he's got a little run here, but watch the pursuit. Number 78 here. Mr. Usher. Daryl Usher, a junior. San Mateo trying to get loose. Lamb is seven out of 12 with an interception. A touchdown pass and 71 yards. A quick pop out here. Stephen Pierce with it inside the 40. Pulls his way to the 36-yard line before John Custard comes up and makes the stop. He's a good receiver, Skip. Mr. Pierce caught 12 passes in the first two games for 177 yards. He's been averaging 15 yards a pop. But just move here. Stephen Pierce on the inside. I said a little bit earlier that he had man-to-man -man when he got in on the slot. He got that man-to-man. -man. Got the quick pitch out there and picked up eight yards. Third and two. Really more like third and one. McClellan and Jones he told you are the this, running backs. Told you this last week, Skip. Mike White has recruited 16 kids from California in this team. Len McClellan goes ahead and picks up the first down inside the 35. Kevin Parsons, the strong side linebacker, made the stop. But Illinois has a first and ten, and they're playing a little better with a little more offensive verve than they well, did early. He gave away 21 points, just handed it to him right on a silver platter. As I said, he, Mike White, of course, came from California, was head coach out there, and he still has those affiliations out there. 16 kids are dressed tonight from California, this Illinois team. Gordon and Pierce to the left. Stan Fitt flanks right. Shane Lamb in the pocket is rushed. He throws and lo low and incomplete. And that was forced. It was intended for Anthony Williams, but a lot of pressure on by Brad Tyrer, the defensive left end out of Kansas City, Missouri. He's a second unit player. I don't think nobody's blocking at all up front on these passing situations. Keith Mr. Lamb is really being pressured. Keith Jones came limping off the field. The fullback for Illinois. Each team has a running back named Keith Jones. Greg Turner has taken his place. It's second and ten at the 33 for the Illini with 4.53 remaining. This kid ran hard last week, Mr. Turner. Lamb to throw. He's going for all of it. He's got a man incomplete. It was intended for James Gordon. The ball sort of hung up a little bit. I think if he could have zipped it in there, he would have had a completion. Charles Fryer defended. I tell you, Shane Lamb's paying a price. Every time he's releasing the football, he's being flat on his back. Watch this hit here. He gets popped right away, right as he released the football. He got knocked backwards by Neil Smith. 91, Tony Holloway. Watch 91, Mr. Holloway hits him. Look here. Boom. 
And it's that's pretty tough to throw it on the money when you're getting hit like that every time, I'll he, tell you. There's a time remaining. He made a remarkable throw under the circumstance. Darrell Usher Sorry. flanks wide to the left. Third down, 10 yards to go. Lamb rolls. Lamb is in trouble. Lamb is spilled at the line of scrimmage. He had absolutely no chance to set up. Mark Munford was the one who made the stop. It's fourth and 10 at the 33. That's the king right there. He started it all. Started professional football. Highest paid, probably gentleman of all time. Got half the receipts with the Chicago Bears, the third. I think it was the third or a half. He made a lot, a lot of money. Three-time All-America, five touchdowns against Michigan in this stadium in 1924. 31 career touchdowns. The claims still the greatest running back of all time. Fourth down, 10 yards to go. Lamb goes for all of it. He's got a man down the middle, overthrew it. It Pierce. was intended for Stephen Pierce. He was alone, but the pass was too tall. And Nebraska will take over. He was open. Stephen Pierce gets open over the middle. Look at the pass protection. Mr. Lamb didn't know how to feel back there when he had all that pass protection. That was Stephen Pierce wide open. There he had it. Had him on the slot, see? Mix up in the pass defense. Cleet Blakeman is now into quarterback the Nebraska team. They lead at 35-7. Micah Heibel and John Kelly reserve running backs in there as well. Tom Osborne is... Well, he's got, as Paul said, he's got a lot of quality people, and so he uses them, and this is John Kelly, and they really nail him, stack him up at the line of scrimmage. Sean Jones, a 274-pound nose tackle out of San, Pe San Pedro, California, and Kurt Griggis out of Hickory Hills, Illinois, made the stop. Second down, and nine at the 34. Paul Horning, Skip Carey with you from Champaign. The second team offensive line is in there for Nebraska. That doesn't mean that they lose much in the way of quantity. Blakeman rolls wants to throw, does, has a man at the 49-yard line. It's complete. At halftime, I hope we're going to be able to I got a, a chance to interview two friends of my friends of my pleasure. Back of course, tonight, course, Dick was there. It's not to interview probably the best linebackers that ever played the game. And uh, I think uh, back, 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 the Illinois defense. Back carries the ball. Like a high ball. And he pulls his way down to the 41 yard line. Bobby Dawson made this. Jason Gamble had been the recipient. The recipient. The receipt pass. The ball is the ball. One yard line. A pickup. And a pickup. Second and two at the 41. Oklahoma won big. One big. One big. One big. One big. Nothing over Minnesota. He do He don't that game. This is a minute of play and play and play and play and play and this year. Blake Blake throws a under it's incomplete. It was intended for Jason Jason up on the two yard line. Hard line. Hard line. Hard line. Hard line. Two at the four. Two twenty one remaining in the first half. So it has to look at the fighting Illini marching band. Down two yards to go. You go. You go. Yeah. Big Monday night. 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 First, 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 the first, 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 first. Session, 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 
pick. I'd pick. They're in a minute. 30, 30, 30. That's eight. In your idol. In your idol. In your idol. They've had plenty of, plenty of, plenty of, plenty of.
emotions of tonight's game being brought to you in part by Strohs and Strohlite. Now you're talking good times and Strohs is spoken here. Now let's enjoy the marching Illini band directed by Gary Smith. Two supercomputing centers, the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign is widely regarded as the world leader in supercomputing research. The University of Illinois is the birthplace of computerized teaching. The University of Illinois has one of the finest performing arts centers in the nation. The University of Illinois has the third largest university library in the country, ranking behind only Harvard and Yale. And it was the first university in the world to develop a comprehensive rehabilitation education program for the disabled. Excellence in all fields of knowledge. The University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. Nebraska pioneers are making way for even greater achievements. A Boeing 727. Empty, it weighs over 50 tons. Just to take off, it needs 4,000 pounds of fuel. If only its weight could be reduced, the soaring costs of flight could come down. That's now a very real possibility, thanks to discoveries at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. These tiny carbon fibers have been created as a future replacement for the heavy copper wire in the 727. It could reduce the plane's weight by 1,300 pounds. Over the course of a year, that's a savings of 120 million gallons of fuel for commercial flights. Imagine the possibility. This NASA-supported project is just one example of UNL's pioneering research. The University of Nebraska-Lincoln, learning that makes a difference. Skip Carey, Paul Horning with you from Champaign, Illinois, and all you can do is marvel at Nebraska and really feel sorry for Illinois. They're not that bad a football team, but these guys are awful good. They really are, and the thing of it is, if, if Illinois, maybe, you got a hypo the whole thing, if they hadn't have given the football up three times in the first quarter, they gave, gave them up 21 points. Now, the, the roar that you're hearing, I think we ought to go right down to the field. It's for number 50. He wore number 50 here at Illinois, 51 with the Chicago Bears. They're going to retire his jersey, as we were talking about. Retired, but they unretired it when his son got there, and they're letting him wear his I father's happen, jersey. I happen to know that's happened one other place <laughs> in Green Bay. Paul Horning's number five was unretired this year for Vince Ferragamo, who used to play at Nebraska. That's right. Well, that's football. That's the way it is. When you get up there to bar, go steal it. <laughs> Brian Youngins will kick it off. The third quarter is underway in a very, very short kick that sails out of bounds. Now they'll kick from the 30. Everybody hates that. Well, when you're on those special teams and you run down the field, I don't know. They don't have to kick from that's the right. 30. They, they can take, take the there. football there if they want, but that wind is really blowing against the Illinois kickoff man here, so they'll take the five. I started to say special teams guys hate that. You cruise down there and get oh, the really clock does. clean, and it I have to go really back does. and do it again. Listen, I've had a few of them. When I used to kick off, if I kicked it out of bounds, they, boy, they they give you that look. Then it, I kicked it off twice once. I kicked it off twice out of bounds. And, boy, I'm telling you, I hurt some. Come on, kick it. Boy, they get tired and they get hot. From the 30, Youngins will try again. Shepard and Rogers still the deep men. They stand at the 15. So Nebraska figures to have pretty good field position. Nebraska's been penalized seven times for 50 yards. Illinois twice for 10 in the game. Boy, college football really is a lot of fun. It really is. I tell you, there's nothing like it. The fans, the crowd. Look at it, 75,000 people here. Good kick. Yeah, he nailed that one. It's. Terry Rogers getting to the 30 yard line. He gets outside. He's at the 40 and he's knocked down at the 43 by Ed White. If it wasn't for him, this thing would be even worse for Illinois. Good return by Rogers. Now let's pause five seconds to allow our local stations to identify themselves. WTBS Atlanta. First and 10 at the 43 for the Cornhuskers. Steve Taylor is. Back in there, he's the number one quarterback. 
he's pretty well split the game with Blakeman first unit back in for Nebraska they run out of the eye they lead 38 7 at their own, their own 43 yard line it's Keith Jones again at the 45 at the 47 he's knocked down Lance Harkey the right corner made the stop a gain of four at second and six at the 47. Sam Ellsworth who played inside linebacker last week is seeing a little bit more action on the outside tonight he's probably their best linebacker skip he's a junior from right here in Urbana well what a night for Jones 11 rushes 131 yards he's something he's going to be around for some time and Doug DuBose of course who was one of the leading candidates for the Heisman Trophy is out for the year so this really uh, even a bad break for DuBose a good break for Jones to get this much action Taylor keeps it and gets just two midfield to pick up a three. It'll be third and three from there. Ed White again. Boy, what a game he has had to get from Decatur, Georgia. The free safety made the stop for Illinois. He's made a lot of tackles sure tonight. Has. That's not necessarily good news for the Illini. No, that means they're in the backfield. Anytime you see a safety man make a lot of tackles, unless he's forcing a sweep to his side, and most of the time he should be in on it there. But uh, anytime a safety makes most of your tackles, you know that you're getting beat up front. Rod Smith and Von Shepard flanked left. It's third down, four yards to go from the 49. Taylor rolls left, wants to throw for it, can't find a man, but he can scramble. He's way back there now. He gets one good block, but he's back at his own 30-yard line. Now at the 40, and he's knocked down at the 42 by left end Scott Davis out of Plainfield, Illinois. I lost about six yards. Tom Welter threw the good block, but it wasn't nearly enough to help quarterback Steve Taylor. Here it is. He's really in trouble here, but look at the quickness. He comes back. He picks up a good block. 73 gets killed right here. Now Taylor's in trouble. He's going to lose about six yards. Finally, a good tackle by number 90. That's Scott Davis, defensive end from Plain Plainfield, Illinois. John Croker kicks it. Daryl Usher is the deep man, and he's going to field it at the 17, and he's nailed right there. A fine tackle by Willie Griffin. We'll be right back in Champaign. Kids wear funny makeup, don't they? Oh, that's got popular, I'll tell you. First, first saw, thing I saw was North Carolina with the blue prints in the face. Ray Wilson gets the carry and loses about two yards back to the 15 yard line. It'll be second and 12 at the 15. Lee Jones, the starting right tackle for the Cornhuskers, made the stop. Nebraska plays Oregon in Lincoln next Saturday. Illinois is idle for a week, then they play at Ohio State. <laughs> Stan Fitz, Stephen Williams check into the game. They're wide receivers. They got a shot there, too. Ohio State's not in Nebraska, and especially this year, and uh, Illini will be better. Shane Lamb to throw into coverage and incomplete and very nearly intercepted. It was intended for Stan Fitz, and it will be third and 12 at the 15. Mark Munford. I think Mike White would uh, be more than happy get with a standoff here in the second half he's been he knows he's completely out class and what he's hoping for now and I'm, I'm sure he didn't tell the team this at halftime but he sure hopes that they don't score like three or four more touchdowns and have it something like in the 60s or the high 50s and completely get embarrassed if he can hold uh, and he can hope that Nebraska don't score maybe uh, one touchdown and a field goal or something he'd be pretty happy with it. all sides are the Something flag is thrown late. Lamb is sacked way back at the six-yard line. Lee Jones again in on the stop. It looked like Danny Noonan may have jumped the All-America candidate. Nose guard, 6'4", 280 out of Lincoln. He dominates that middle. That will make it third and seven at the 20. And that's what it will be. Dave Harbour's done a pretty good job on Danny Noonan. He got three or four sacks in the first game against Florida State on the quarterback and I think Dave Harbour's done a pretty good job he's he's had some help uh, oh absolutely he gets double teamed almost every time on the pass offside defense third down it's third and about seven from the 20 yard line 38 seven Cornhuskers they blew this one open early there he is take a look at those arms 
Williams and fit wide to the left. Watch, look at the look at the arm on that young man. He's strong. Almost, Almost jumped again, but got back. Again. Lamb has time, puts it high in the air. Good coverage downfield, incomplete. Brian Davis broke it up. James Gordon, the intended receiver, and Illinois will have to kick the football. 11:35 left in the third quarter. Southern Cal and Washington next week. Mel Proctor will be back to join Paul Horney. I didn't get the score of the SC game. I think they 17 14 17 to 14 tough game against Baylor SC remains unbeaten and I'll tell you next week opening up the Big Ten. I mean the Pac-10 game with two of the best teams maybe huh. Little gets UCLA. the kick away boy it's not a bad one at all. Takes a good bounce and is going to go out of bounds at around the 30 yard line Shepard. Couldn't handle it. It'll be first and 10 at the 30. A fine kick, 49 yards. So Nebraska sets up shop again at their own 30 yard line. There are some Nebraska fans. Their fans are about as rabid as, as any say, of them. There's that Southern Cal game as ball. They say they, there they are, 17 to 14, USC over Baylor. They trailed early, and I'll tell you, that sets it up for next week. Washington, 52 to 21. And Boys, right here on TNT next week. There it is, Washington, USC. Keith Jones and Ken Kalen, the running backs. The ball goes to Jones, and he picks his way for a couple of yards. Jeff Marklin makes the stop. Jones is, well, the mark get at the 32. It'll be second and eight for Nebraska. Nebraska leads the series 6 2 and 1 tie against Nebraska. Or rather against Illinois. Illinois hasn't won since 1924, but really they haven't played that often since then. It was 52-25 in Lincoln last year. I formation. The give again is to Jones. He's got a hole this time, and he bangs his way to the 37, a pickup of five, and it will be third and three. Ed White again makes the stop, that free safety. Well, he's up there every time, and uh, Jones again doesn't get anybody around him defensively until he's downfield about four or five yards he's up to 138 now 138 yards gained on 13 carries for Mr. Keith Jones from Omaha Nebraska possession play here it's third and three at the 37 10 20 left in the third quarter Nebraska winning big it's 38 7 Brinson in motion the pitch is to Jones and he gets there crosses the 40 to the 41 and the first down will be the result for ne Nebraska James Finch out of Indianapolis made the stop Ed White was in on it again as well but a first down is the result of the 41 yard line broke all of Gale Sarah's records in Nebraska. <laughs> Gail I think is here at the game tonight looking on I have seen I him but see somebody him. told me he was going to be here first and 10 at the 41 Keith Jones Tom Osborne says is the fastest running back he's ever had at Nebraska Quarterback keep by Taylor and he cuts it to the 45 to the 50 and he's out of bounds at the 49 yard line Bobby Dawson ran him out and we may have a late hit as well. A flag is down at the 50 yard line. And Dawson made the stop close to the first down. I think he got the first down picked up 10 face mask face mask and it's going to be added on. Here it is again and see you've got to get Taylor get the football out of his hands. And of course, when he get, cuts it up inside, it's a nice game. There's Keith Jones following. Taylor, 26 yards on five rushes tonight. Boy, look at that. Miami of Ohio. And, and that's a Tiger Stadium down in wow. LSU. That's so amazing. That holds up. That will be a major upset. First and 10 at the 44 yard line. Miami of Ohio, the hotbed for coaches. Our big coaches came to the school. Ken Kalen, the fullback, pounds his way inside the 35 yard line. White and Harkey, Lance Harkey from Los Angeles, Ed White from Decatur, Georgia. On the stop, their market at the 35. A nine yard advance, it's second and one, and it's just an inexorable drive. The most net yards in a game for a Nebraska running back is 285 by Mike Rogier against Kansas in 1983 on 31 carries. Keith Jones has an outside chance of that. He has 142 right now. And there goes Taylor again inside the 30. The late pitch. He's got Jones, and Jones is out of bounds at the 19-yard line. And they can do whatever they want. Keith Taylor, 
And Ed White on the stop. Now, who gets the yardage here? The quarterback's up the field about eight yards. After he's gained the eight yards. You watch Taylor. He gets up on the inside. There's Jones. Now, he should continue, and he does. Now he decides to pitch it. Jones gets it. I think they got to split that up. They do split it up. Keith Taylor ran him out. It's first and 10 at the 19 with 9.05 left in our third quarter. Paul Horning, Skip Carey with Officially, you. Officially, uh, Taylor got nine yards, and Jones got eight. A lot of togetherness there. Taylor throws, almost intercepted at the five. Lance Harkey. Leap tie, had his hands on it, broke it up, but couldn't hang on. Tom Banderas was the intended receiver. He's out of Oak Grove, Missouri. The tight end. Broken up by number nine. There it is. Lance Harsh Harkey breaks it up. Uh, Mr. Taylor hasn't had the anywhere as close to the night he had against Florida State. Against Florida State, he was 10 out of 16, 130 yards, two touchdowns. Tonight, he's only one out of five. So, and, But, of course, there hasn't been any pressure either to complete a pass. It's Rod Smith is the split end left. High formation, second down, 10 yards to go. The little inside reverse goes to Von Shepard, and he doesn't get that much. He fights down to about the 13-yard line, a pickup of six. Mark Kelly out of Chicago made the stop. A reserve free safety. They'll mark it at the 13. A pickup of six, and it'll be third and four from there. 8.37 remaining. Dana Brinson to the left. Jason Gamble is to the right. Taylor, good flip. Keith Jones inside the 10, powers inside the 5 to the 4-yard line. That option. He only weighs 190 pounds. He's 5'10", but he yeah, sticks but his nose strong. in there. He's, he's, got, he's built. I was very close to him on the field before the game. I took a look at him, and he's... He's very muscular and he's a very strong runner. Watch his Ed White again. He comes up from his safety spot. Good move by Mr. Jones. He cut back to the inside. Got the first down easily. First and goal just outside the four yard line. They go to the wishbone look here. Taylor keeps it. Now he pitches it. Can he turn the corner? Von Shepard. Did not get in. He's out inside the one. Dawson knocked him out. No touchdown. But he's within inches, and it's second and goal. Here comes the option. They run it with the flanker this time. He's trailing on the. There he comes, number two, Von Shepard from St. Paul, Minnesota. Just great speed. He gets outside, almost gets into the end zone here. Inside the one. Nebraska fan, obviously. Two tight ends in there for the Huskers. The quarterback, Taylor, keeps it. I think he got in, but no signal from the officials. So I guess he didn't. Yes, he did. Touchdown. Absolutely. I was going to say, they didn't give him a touchdown there. He looked like he got two, three yards to me. Very easily. And Mark Cooper, the center, led the way. He's a 250-pounder out of Lincoln. They say that Nebraska has the best weight program in college well, football. In fact, you. Mike White was talking about it, said that yeah. theirs was the one everybody yeah. was trying to copy. They kind of say this is state of the art as far as the weight program is concerned. And you see some of these young men come up, the offensive tackles and guards. It's a mandatory program out there. As it, all over the country, it's the same thing. The college would do it before. They, they've done it a long time, and it's really paid off for them. Klein's kick is good, and the score mounts to Nebraska 45, Illinois 7. You're watching Super Football Saturday night on Turner Network Television. Network. Welcome back to our studios here in Atlanta. It's not an interconference battle per se down in Nashville. It's an interfamily battle against Tulane and Van. Okay, Kevin, thank you, and here we go. Dale Klein will kick it off. Greg Boysaw and Stephen Williams now, the deep men for Illinois. We're going to start to see some new faces in this game. Williams at the 5, at the 15, at the 20. He slips and falls. He had a little alley that he was trying to cut through, but he cut too sharply and hit the deck at the 24-yard line. A 21-yard return, they say. Gary Schneider made the stop. A senior out of O'Neill, Nebraska. So Illinois sets up shop at the 24-yard line. 
Shane Lamb is still the quarterback. 7.41 remaining in our third quarter. Pierce and Usher are flanked left. Reese goes in motion, now sets up in the wingback position. And Lamb rolls left. He's got time to throw this time. He gets it away. It's deflected and incomplete. Kevin Parsons, strong side linebacker, got a hand on it. Second down, 10 yards to go at the 24. Illinois really has no choice now but to throw and hope they get lucky. 75,865, the capacity crowd. Brian Washington, the strong safety, checks into the game, or is shaken, rather, for Nebraska. And now we'll go limping off the field. It's not pleasant to see. We'll bring in Jeff Tomjack. Out of Ewing, Nebraska. That's the first injury that we've noticed tonight, and I hope it's not a severe one. 7.34 left, second down, 10 yards to go at the 24-yard line. They've got spread all over the field now. The give, though, is to the fullback, and he breaks one tackle. It's Keith Jones of Illinois out of Rock Hill, Missouri, a 6'2", 195-pounder, but he doesn't get much. Tony Holloway has had a good game tonight. Makes the, makes the stop. You see the time remaining. Danny Noonan has been held pretty well in check, but to do that, they have to double and triple him, and that lets the other guys wander around and do some damage. What happens if they run to the right, and they haven't had that many yards gained rushing tonight they run to the right to take the right guard and the center double team they run to the left take left guard and center double team in. he still makes a few tackles possession play third and seven lamb to throw he gets it away and he's got a man and it's broken up incomplete good defensive play by brian siebler the rush was on they rushed seven that time little blitz Sp again the pressure against shane lamb and to take up for him a little bit he's really been on his back half the time and Chris Spockman was right in there the senior for Kansas City Missouri he is 76 last year he had an interception for a touchdown against Illinois Mr. Spockman Dana Brinson and Von Shepard the deep man Chad Little will kick it and he boots it from the 18 yard line he got another pretty good one away fair catch called for fumbled but recovered by he got Von Shepard of Nebraska 45-7, our score will be right back. Portions of tonight's game are being brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealers who invite you to see the 1986 Ford cars and trucks. Have you driven a Ford lately? Terry Rogers has checked into the backfield for Nebraska. They go to work at the 36-yard line. He's in there with Ken Kalen. Pete Blackman is, Blackman is the quarterback. He throws, and it's picked off by the Illini, and they have the ball at the 42-yard line. Mark Mathis. Mark Mathis got the football back for Illinois. That's the first turnover they've had. Blakeman threw it away. It was deflected again. First Nebraska turnover, and Illinois sets up shot. Here it comes. Number 27, watch Deflection. Mark Mathis, his first interception of the year. Number five for that Illinois defense. And give Jeff Markland some credit, too. He's the right. player who deflected it into the air. First and ten at the 41 for the Illini in Nebraska territory with 634 left in our third quarter. Greg Turner, the single running back, and he gets the ball, breaks one tackle, but gets absolutely nothing. Kevin Parsons made the hit at the 41. You just... Illinois just cannot run the ball against no, Nebraska and that's and they can't throw the ball either so boy they're really got some well, let me check some let me run something by you if you can't run it Plenty. and you can't Might throw well, it you might as well kick it on first down so you <laughs> nope, you can get an interception for a touchdown sometimes it gets a little tough for the ref let's take a look get out of the way here All there right. he goes I tell you he got popped pretty good lucky wasn't hurt second and ten at the 41 James Gordon flanks to the right along with Stephen Pierce. Shane Lamb fades to throw, has a man in and out of his hands. It's incomplete. It was intended for Pierce, but he couldn't hang on. Mark Munford again popped him. Nebraska. 
Let's take a look at the nose guard here. He gets a little bit anxious, and I think he caused the center. Timing was very poor on the play. Something happened. Center snapped the ball too quick. Timing was way off offensively. Shane Lamb has missed six passes in a row. Nebraska has won nine or more games, 17 straight seasons, Skip. That's an Boy, NCAA. That's, that's the longest in NCAA. I'll tell you. Lamb knows he's going to have some company back in that pocket. He goes for all of it. And it's knocked away. Incomplete. A flag is thrown, however. An interference is going to be called, I guess, on Charles Fryer. Oh, wait a minute now. It might be on Von Should be. Could be offensive. Let's see. Absolutely. It could be offensive pass interference. S Stephen Williams out there, number two. That's what it is. Let's take a look. Now watch number two. Let's see if he... Yeah, he's the one that's coming over the back. Wasn't defensive pass interference, I'll tell you that. Nope. Looked like everybody was going Against for the ball. Illinois. Why argue? So Illinois will kick it away. Chad Little is in there once more. A single deep man for Nebraska. It's Dana Brimson. Nebraska has appeared in 17 consecutive bowl games. That's the longest streak in the NCAA, starting at the 1969 Sun Bowl. And that is part of the reason they recruit so well. And none of the Nebraska players can invite Beautiful their girls fight. to the games anymore. Brinson fields it and is decked immediately. Well, African nice. Grant made the stop. His full name, African Nigeria Grant. He's named after a country, a continent, and a U.S. president. There was a flag on the play. 50-yard punt. Mr. Little's done a pretty good job punting the football for Illinois tonight. They're going to talk this over with Illinois, it would appear. Nebraska's always had a great offense, Skip. In fact, they've led the Big Eight in total offense nine straight years, averaging 477 yards over the last nine straight years. First and ten at the 11-yard line. Nebraska will set up shop there. As you look at part of the capacity crowd of just under 76,000 in Champaign. They haven't had much to cheer about tonight. Clayton Blakeman is the quarterback again. Terry Rogers in the backfield once more. From the 11, let's see how Nebraska plays it. The pitch comes to Rogers, and he vaults his way to the 14-yard line. African Grant again on the stop. They'll mark it closer to the 15. We'll call it second and six from there. Terry Rogers, of course, the son of Johnny Rogers, a freshman from National City, California, 5'10", 165 pounds. 5'20", remaining in the third quarter. Nebraska playing very impressively. Micah Highball checks in at fullback for the Huskers. To give this to Rogers again, he doesn't get much. Across the 16 to the 17, Mike Peel, the right end out of El Toro, California, makes the stop. So it's third down. 4.55 remaining. Third and around four from the 17. Rain Nelson checks into the game for the first time tonight, or wing back for Nebraska. Out of that eye formation. Blakeman takes it himself, gets the first down across the 20 to the 23-yard line. Sam Ellsworth out of Urbana, Illinois, made the stop. Skip, I've always said that the 71 game, I can remember it. It's one of the greatest games. Well, it's probably the best football game I've ever seen. Nebraska, Oklahoma, Thanksgiving Day, 70. They went undefeated. And that last half of that football game, I think it seemed as if each team scored every time they had the football. And you'd say, well, whoever's got the football, the last time is going to win. And sure enough, I can remember Jeff Kenny going over to score 35 31 and went on to be undefeated. And I think Johnny Rogers was one of the stars of that team, of course. And they may, might have a similar game brewing in late November in Lincoln this year. As they've both gotten off to a great start, illegal procedure against someone that looked like an Illinois player jumped. Jim Blondell, the nose tackle, but we'll let the officials make that judgment. 
403 remaining third quarter. Our SEC game next Saturday afternoon will be Tulane and Ole Miss. Bob Neal and Tim Foley will have it for you. And as they go along, they'll keep you up to date with updates and highlights of the Florida State Michigan game as well. That one will be done by my Good pal, ball. Pete Fan. Illegal procedure. Sure. Off your pal, First down. Ron Kramer. Who was up here in the booth, who drove over here. We're right, gonna... finally got to meet him. He's a terrific fellow. Oh, he's, he's my man. And we're going up to Green Bay for the Packer Bear reunion Monday night. I think we'll have a lot more fun off the field than we will on. <laughs> Your basic broken play there. Yes. Mike Beal got to Blakeman. And it'll be second down and 15 yards to go. On the 18 yard line. 337 remaining third quarter. John Nichols is now the center of the second unit. Center 6'2, 265 pounder out of Littleton, Colorado. Second and, well, let's call it 14. Blakeman, draw play. It's Terry Rogers crossing the 20 out to the 24, and another penalty flag is down. Ed White. Got a clip, I think. With the tackle, probably clipping. Jason Gamble cut back on the block. He may have, may have got caught for a clip off African Grant. That's it. And as is so often the case, Paul Horning is absolutely right. Jason Gamble watching me. Clips African Grant. Here comes Terry Rogers around the outside. Here comes the clip right here. Yep. See that helmet right in the back? That's clipping. Good call. So that'll set Nebraska back again. 310 remaining in the third quarter. What are they doing for you in Green Bay on Monday night? They are giving me the Clipping. Hall of Fame ring. Oh, Pete yeah. Elliott, in fact, who gave Butkus the ring, who is the executive director of the NFL Hall of Fame in Canton, Ohio. They're going to give me the Hall of Fame ring at halftime of the Bear-Packer game. And we're having a big Packer-Bear reunion that weekend. So we have a little golf tournament on Tuesday, the NFL tournament. So it's going to be a big weekend. Green Bay. Rogers breaks one tackle, breaks another, but is decked at the 15-yard line. Ray Hairston makes the stop. He's out of Colorado Springs, Colorado, and the nephew of an old friend of mine, Happy Hairston, the former NBA performer. Third down and 17 for the Huskers with 2.34 left third quarter. Immediately on Tuesday, after I get the ring, of course, I'll send you the ring down in Atlanta to go with all the other you, things you know you I'll receive. take good care of it for you. Yes. Six defensive backs in there for Illinois and timeout will be called by Nebraska with 218 remaining in the third quarter. It's 45 seven Huskers. This is Super Football Saturday night on Turner Network Television. There's the time remaining in the third quarter and it's a third and 17 situation. I don't guess the moon does nothing to you. Pretty good, huh? No, not really. But really? Okay. Uh-oh. There's a completion to Banderas. He breaks one tackle and bulls his way out to the 35-yard line. Now, Banderas, that's his first catch of the year. He didn't play against Florida State. He's the big tight end. He's a junior from Oak Grove, Missouri. 20-yard pickup to Banderas. Well, that really kills Illinois. They had him pinned back third and 17. And yeah, finally a good route, a good pass route by the big tight end. He got open. And he does a lot with the football after he catches it. First and 10 at the 36 for the Husker. Keep it on the ground a little bit. Cleve Blakeman getting a lot oh, of time. Call timeout. He didn't need to do that. That's strange, isn't it? Well, he had the uh, one guy was in the wrong spot. He went out. Wanted him flanked out on the outside. Ray Nelson, number four, was in the wrong spot. Boy, there's a guy who really turned things around at Nebraska. Bob Devaney was the head coach for 10 years. He led them to eight Big 8 championships, two national titles in 70 and 71. Football News Coach of the Year 1970 and 71 inducted into the College 
Football Hall of Fame in 81, then Great athletic coach. director at Nebraska. They were Absolutely. they were really a nothing program until he arrived from Michigan State and turned them around. And now he's carried it on pretty good too. Tom Osborne to take a look at. Two minutes, eight seconds left in the third quarter. It's going to be a happy flight home for the Huskers after this one. Nebraska's rushed for over five yards on 23 of its 44 carries. I guarantee you next week we're going to have a bad, much better game in this one. Washington and USC at USC. Should be a dandy. Yes. Well, after the timeout, they still don't know what to do. Now they do. It's Terry Rogers again. He gets to the 40 and to the 42 yard line. African Grant made the stop. He didn't play much until the second half, but he's playing all right. Jay Lynch helped him out. A gain of about six. And now McCathorn Clayton checks into the game at quarterback. And Cleet Wakeman goes out. Clayton out of Orlando, Florida. He's a junior, six feet tall, 190 pounder. Played an awful lot last year for Nebraska. Till Steve Taylor came to the fore this year. Rogers with it again, 45, 50. Out of bounds at the 48-yard line. African Grant ran him out with some authority, perhaps a little too much enthusiasm. He's it up. He's it up a little bit. There's Mr. Grant. I tell you, Terry Rogers has been impressive here. The freshman from National City, California. He's got 31 yards, six carries, averaging a little over five yards a pop. Tyrese, the Heisman Trophy. Tyrese Knox is now in at fullback, and Jeff Wheeler is the eye back for the Cornhuskers. Everybody getting to play in this one. Cawthorn keeps it, cuts it, gets to the 40, 35, 30, 25, 22. Sam Ellsworth made the saving tackle, but not till he reached the 21-yard line. A 26-yard scamper for McCathorn Clayton. He's from Orlando, Florida, six foot tall. He's the third quarterback. And of course, he's got the quickness too. Look at this talent. I tell you, he could start for a lot of teams. He's listed as this in the three deeps as the third quarterback for Nebraska. Again. Oh, look at that nice speed. Carson. Clayton. One minute left, third quarter. Clayton gives on a delay this time, and it's Jeff Wheeler who carries the ball down to the 20 yard line. He's from Urbandale, Iowa, 195 pounder Sam Ellsworth in on the stop one more time. He scored five touchdowns in 85, as you see. Threw for 600 yards, so he, he saw some action last year. Taylor just beat him out, plain and simple, in the spring and in the fall. Banderas and Griffin in a wide receiver for Nebraska. They just keep the fresh troops coming. Catherine wants to throw. He's out of the pocket and he throws incomplete at the 12-yard line intended for Rod Smith is split end. That stops the clock with 22 seconds left in the third quarter. <laughs> 45 7 Nebraska. Don't forget Braves baseball 205 Eastern time on TBS tomorrow afternoon the rubber game of the Giants series. Now you're going to go work that one. I think I'm going to take tomorrow off. All right. Third and ten at the 21. There's the throw and he's got a man for a touchdown Willie Griffith. Well put it right on the money too. 21 yard touchdown pass. And the score keeps going up. Look at this little number they got. They got a new number there. Little end zone annex. I just think it's a monument to a bad habit. I did too. What they do. Willie Griffin, a 260-pound tight end from Monrovia, California, catches the pass from McCathorn Clayton. Good play action pass. It just sucked the safety man right up into the. He thought it was going to be a run, and Willie Griffin. First touchdown pass of the year was just wide open. Craig Schnitzler kicks that extra point. And the score mounts to Nebraska 52, Illinois 7, and Mike White is having a very long, long night. He feels like General Custer did at Little Bighorn. 52 to 7, 16 seconds remaining 
in the quarter. And if the folks down in Oklahoma are watching tonight, they're probably feeling a little uneasy, just like the folks in Nebraska felt this afternoon when the Big Red of Oklahoma knocked down Minnesota 63-0. 52 to 7 in this game. Nebraska scored 52 points and gave up 25 against Illinois last year. Last year. Greg Boyce is one of the deep men for the Illini. Stephen Williams is the other. Dale Klein will kick it off. 16 seconds remaining in the third quarter. It has been a, it's not been a pretty sight here. Nebraska, though, has looked great. Stephen Williams carries at the 20, at the 25, and he's knocked down at the 28. Eight seconds left in the quarter. Twenty four yard return. As I said a lot of red people here. A lot of red fans big red. So Illinois will go to work. Shane Lamb is still in there at, the, at quarterback. Lynn McClellan goes in motion now sets up in the I formation. Lamb gives it to McClellan he crosses the 30. Larry Pete in on the stop the second unit middle guard in the third quarter is history 52 7 Nebraska our score will be right back in Champaign. Tonight's game is being brought to you in part by Budweiser Beachwood aged for that distinctively clean crisp taste that makes Budweiser the king of beer for all that you do. This Bud's for you. Second and seven for Illinois as we go to the fourth quarter. Keith Jones back in there at fullback. Pass is complete out to the 40, 41 yard line. Stephen Pierce with a reception from Shane Lamb. Second unit cornerback John Custard out of Bellevue, Nebraska made the stop. That's good for a first down at the 41 yard line. They call it pork day here. They honor their pork producers and unfortunately it's been a slaughter. <laughs> at least we had some good barbecue up here at halftime. Well, you would speak for yourself. I said uh, I had some good barbecue. Take this very seriously. At halftime, of course, you had to stay near the microphone to work. I yeah, grabbed me a little I understand. Well, that's barbecued you, ribs. That's the way you are. Yeah. Ever since Russia, <laughs> the delay and nothing happening, and Keith Jones is buried for a loss back at around the 39. Larry Pete again in on the stop. The second unit, Nebraska middle guard. And Keith Jones gets up a little gingerly here may have turned an ankle and he Greg trots Turner. off the field. Greg, Greg Turner's also uh, got the bad ankle. No Keith Jones excuse me thought that was Greg Greg Turner went in right. You got it. Yeah all yeah. right I'll, I'll get it right eventually. Look like you're a victim of the E factor here. I <laughs> 52 7 I score. Second and 13 for the Illini. There's a completion to the 45. It's Stan Fit breaking a tackle. He gets to midfield before he's knocked out of bounds. He's a little short of a first down. Let's see what's up with Kevin Slayton back in Atlanta. Kevin? Thank you, Skip. Let's Why they name themselves the Horned Toads? That's an interesting nickname. Isn't it? Mm. I guess they go hunting down there a lot. Just looking for them little beauties, don't they? I, I guess you're right. Third and I don't one. know. What are you kidding? Yeah, of course I am. Third and one at the 50. I know that. Greg Turner lost two. No way. No chance. Brad Tyrer, senior out of Kansas City. Neil Smith, junior out of New Orleans. Blake Henning, out of Crete, ne Crete Nebraska, all in on the stop. And it's time. One would think. For a punt. Fourth down. About three yards to go. They may not. They may just go for it here. What do they got to lose? Lamb is staying in there and they are going to go for it. And they're going to throw it. One would guess that they would. Fourth down. Three yards to go. 
quick pop pass. It's caught by Pierce. He's buried. Depends on where they mark it, whether he got a first down or not. Jeff Tomjack made the stump. I'll give him the first down. I don't think he made it in. They're going to come up short. They're going to measure it here. Paul Horning says it's short. By the way, congratulations. I should have said this much earlier. I know we talked about it earlier today, but really happy for you about the Hall of Fame. Well, thank you. Tremendous honor. I, I enjoyed it, and of course, I can't couldn't say anything less about that, but it was just a marvelous week for, for me and my family, and it was just, uh, just super. It really was. The night before on a baseball broadcast, Pete Van Weeren and I, around 10 o'clock, congratulated you, knowing you were curled up with a milkshake. That's it. Watching the game. <laughs> well, you know we were. Absolutely. I'd never miss you and Pete. No. <laughs> of course. McCathorn Clayton will be the Nebraska fullback. It was, as Paul guessed, short. And so Nebraska goes to work again at midfield, actually, technically at their own 49 yard line. First and 10 for the you, Huskers. You mean quarterback, right? Clayton? What, what did I say? Fullback. Well, he's actually uh, he's, the quarterback. He's actually versatile enough, probably, to play quarterback. Look at that. 426, 110. It's been brutal. High formation, man in motion. The quarterback keeps. He's in trouble, and he's thrown at the line of scrimmage. Sam Ellsworth has had a pretty good game for the Illini. I made the stop. Oh, he's a good linebacker, and he's hurt again. The kid got banged up a little bit, Mr. Ellsworth, in the first quarter, and he hung in there. He's a, probably their best defensive linebacker. Sam Ellsworth, the junior from Urbana, and he's in pain. Looks like maybe a rib injury. We're just guessing from up here. Second down, 10 yards to go. 12.38 remaining in our game. Don't forget Mel Proctor hooks up with Paul once again next weekend. This is Super Football Saturday night on Turner Network Television. 38 remaining in our game. 52-7 is the score. Willie Griffin and Tom Banderas, a couple of tight ends, check in for Nebraska on a second and 10 situation the give is to the running back Dana Brinson Brinson gets outside to the 40 35 30 knocked out of bounds at about the 22 yard line by Ed White I tell you Dana Brinson can make the big play this kid's going to be exciting he's made a couple tonight of course he gets very good block he's 5'9 175 75 pounds maybe from Valdesta Georgia look at the blocking game. 30 yard advance to the 21 yard line it's first and 10 from there. And now the officials have called timeout here, and I really don't know. I guess they're going to measure. No, they won't be measuring. It's a 30-yard game. It's gives a us, first down, yeah, sure. Gives us a chance to tell you, however, that this telecast here we is... Go. Yeah, you, you want to do this? No, you go ahead. You do it so well. Is off, yes, I did. Is I heard you last week. Is authorized under broadcasting rights granted by the Big Ten Conference. But the Big Ten wishes they hadn't granted it. Any publication, rebroadcast, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, the descriptions, or accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Big Ten Conference or the Turner Broadcasting System is absolutely and positively prohibited. You cannot do it. No, sir. Absolutely not. First and 10 at the 21. I don't know what this timeout is all about. The officials confer down below. It was a timeout called by the officials. Nebraska will set up shot at the shop at the Illinois 21 yard line when play resumes and it is about to do so. What'd you say the record was? Uh, 63. Illinois? Well, I'm going to tell you something. When they get seven points out of this drive, they'll have a shot at it. That was 63 nothing way back in the early 1900s. The give us to the fullback, a fumble by Tyrese Knox and an Illinois recovery, I believe. Yes. I got it. So Illinois stopped him that time as the youngster, the sophomore Tyrese Knox from Daly City, California, coughed it up. And Illinois recovers the ball. James Finch comes away with it. And the Illini have it back. Here we go again. There's a the second turnover of the night. Hands it off to the fullback as Tyrese Knox, the sophomore from Daly City, California. He fumbles it. And the Illini, James Finch, a senior from Indianapolis, gets it. Neil Walner was the fellow who knocked the ball through with a solid hit. So Illinois has a first and 10 at the 23-yard line with 12-20 remaining in the game. Shane Lamb hanging in there, the quarterback from Cardiff-by-the-Sea, California. 
He gives to his running back, Ray Wilson, and Wilson bangs his way out to the 25, maybe the 26. Leroy Etienne out of New Iberia, Louisiana. 235-pound reserve linebacker made the stop. Tom Osborne, watching him for years, boy, he is a phlegmatic coach. His emotion is all inside. Sure is. And, uh, sort of like Tom Landry. Just stands, of course, there's not much to get excited about here when your team's got 52 points. You just, you're actually hoping, I think, that they don't score anymore. I would. I wouldn't want to score anymore. Lamb throws a strike to Pierce at the 30-yard line. He's decked there. A gain of five. It will be third and three. Mark uh -oh. Blazek made the stop, but now Lamb is. He can ill afford to lose this hurting. Young man going heading into the Big Ten schedule next week. It's his right knee. Let's look at it again and see what happened. He just got clipped on the back. He just right. got clipped on the back and his leg stuck in the turf. Neil Smith was the guy who got to him. Looked like he got blocked it looked like into he it. got his heel clipped. And there's a Neil. So, uh, I don't believe this. Miami, Ohio, 21, LSU 6, playing at Tiger Stadium in Baton Rouge, third quarter. And I didn't think it was possible for things to get any worse for Illinois tonight, and they just did as... Shane Lamb comes up. He needs a little help. Brian Menkhausen, a 6'4", 200-pounder from another St. Louis suburb, Hazelwood, Missouri, checks into the game at quarterback. Menkhausen is the new quarterback. Shane Lamb gets to the sideline. It's third and three at the 30, and we sincerely hope it's nothing serious. Lamb tonight, 12 out of 24, one intercepted for 107 yards. It wasn't his fault, folks. Well, you win as a team and you lose as a yep. team, and that's exactly what's well, happening. Sometimes quarterbacks can have some great days individually and not, but when you're uh, on your back almost every time you release a football, they were just completely out of class to me up front. Mankhausen comes in throwing, and he throws a strike for a first down to Stephen Pierce at the 35-yard line. Jeff Jamrog made the stop. The right end out of Omaha, Nebraska, but that's enough for a first down, and they mark, mark it at the 36, a six-yard completion for Menkhaus, and that'll do him a world of Absolutely. good. Absolutely, he's freshman, Georgia Tech, 14-point lead, fourth quarter over Virginia. Bill Curry was getting a little heat down in Atlanta after tying Furman last week, despite the fact he's done a great job with that program. Menkhaus in the pocket. Goes long, too long for everybody. Nothing nope. wrong with his confidence or with his arm. Nope. Looks like he's got a good strong arm. He's got good size, 6'4", 200. James Gordon was the intended receiver he had. Uh, you got to no. throw, throw underneath under. They haven't completed anything to get everybody playing up, up tight yet. Still trying to throw the bomb, and they're always double covered. And I think Mr. Lamb has got the need, folks. It's the only part of this game. Uh, this can't can't make any pad or anything to protect the knee. I mean, it's just, the knee just wasn't made to play football, especially on this turf, I think. I don't, I just don't like this turf at all, the artificial turf. Larry Pete made the contact, but the question is, did Illinois lure him offside? And the officials confer, and we're about to find out. It is against Illinois. So, it'll be second and 15 at the 31 for the Illini. That's the fifth penalty for Illinois. It's for a total of 35 yards. Paul Horning, Skip Carey with you. It's 52-7 Cornhuskers. And even Illinois fans would have to admit Tom Osborne isn't running up the score. He has played a lot of people in this game. He's just got a much better football team. That's all there is to it. And again, uh, whistle. And again, it may be illegal against Scott Keogh, the left guard. I guess the cadence with a new quarterback may have Absolutely. something to do with this. Happens a lot. New quarterback. This is the first action he's seen in three games. So it's now second 20 and 26. 
State. Still a close score, third quarter, five-point lead over Boston College. 21 to 6 TCU over Kansas State, second quarter. Second and 20 for young Brian Menthausen. He slips, gets up, throws a strike at the 35. Anthony Williams breaks away, breaks another tackle. He's got a clear field. He's at the 30 and run out of bounds at about the 22-yard line. What a run. Well, he's got these, gives this crowd something to cheer about. 52-yard pickup. Anthony Williams, the senior from New Orleans, Louisiana, big tight end. 6'3", 240 pounds, just kind of ran out of gas down the left sidelines. And watch this Minkhouse, and he slips over. Watch his pitch. He puts it right on the money. This tackle here. By Gary Schneider. Gary Schneider misses the tackle, and then Anthony Williams completes a 52-yard reception. Good hustle by that Nebraska defense to stop him. He was running out of gas. Schneider, who missed the tackle, came back and helped John Custard make it down at the 23-yard line. Menkhausen rolls right. Slowly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And throws it out of bounds. It was intended for Darrell Usher. Blake Henning rushed the passer and made him unload it. So it's second down. Ten yards to go. They mark it at the 22. Menkhausen 2 of 4 for 58 yards. 10-27 left in the game. Stay underneath now, Brian. I know he feels pretty good. He gets to see his first action. He's a freshman. He comes in. He looks like he's got a good, strong arm. He just gives him something underneath. Take it. He fakes, looks, and now he's got to run for his life. Menkhausen at the 30. Now he has a man. Complete 15, 10. Stephen Pierce. Make it at the 12-yard line. All right. Show pretty good movement that time, Skip. There he is. Brian Menkhausen, the big freshman. Good maneuver here. He's faking it, and I don't... Uh, the offensive arrangement of this play was completely... The timing was off. But right here, he makes a very good individual play, and he completes it to Stephon, Stephen Pierce. He's at the 12, and it's first and 10. That's his eighth reception for 66 yards for Pierce. Gives him 20 on the year. Again, illegal procedure against Can't Illinois. Can't do that. You see that guy go in motion. Let's pause five seconds here for our local stations to identify themselves. You're watching WTBS Atlanta. Okay, now our local stations hopefully have identified themselves, and it's illegal procedure against Illinois, and it's first and 15 on the 17-yard line. Spockman and Danny Noonan check back into the game for Nebraska, which is not the best news in the world for Brian Menkhouse. <laughs> those, those are two pretty good horses. First and 15. Here comes the blitz. He gets it away, and All he right. had a man. And it's incomplete. He did a good job recognizing the blitz, Skip. Pierce Could have been caught. Stephen Pierce again. An Illinois player is down on the field. One of the linemen looks like here Mark comes Dennis. the blitz. Now they pick it up pretty good, but he's got to release the football quickly. A little post pattern over the middle. That would have been a good catch. It was thrown a little bit behind him. Pierce just couldn't hold on. Jeff, Jeff Jamrog rushed the passer. And the Illinois trainers work on the injured man, Mark Dennis, the left tackle, a 288-pounder out of Washington, Illinois. 9.38 left in the game. We'll be right back in Champaign, Illinois. Mark Dennis leaves the field. His left knee appears to be the... Two in a row, right? He's able to put some yeah. weight on it, however, so that's... But you never know. He might be underneath the knife tomorrow, but it doesn't look that bad. But he's... Uh, I'll tell you, this last three plays, we've had two knee injuries. Second and 15 from the 17 for Illinois. Blitz again. Mankhausen read it, but Got killed. threw it away. Boy, he really did. Leroy Etienne, once again, the kid from New Iberia, Louisiana, applied the pressure. 
It's third and 15 at the 17 yard line. 934 left in the game. They do not want uh, Illinois to get in the end zone. They're throwing everything at this young quarterback. Two blitzes in a row caused him to go off balance. And if he can get the football to the receiver, they're going to have some running room because uh, when you blitz, you you put yourself in a man to man. And the guy's been open over the middle. Wilson and Jones, the running back to Menkhausen rolls, has time into the end zone. Touchdown. What a catch. Beautiful James pitch. Gordon, great catch. Menkhausen gets an Illinois touchdown and gives this huge crowd something at least to cheer about. That uh, was a nice pitch. It was a nice drive engineered by the freshman here. And that's going to be the right look for Mike White heading into the Big Ten season next year. There he is, Brian Menkhausen from Hazelwood, Missouri. He rolls out away from the blitz and watch this pitch. Downfield, James Gordon's got man to man, went into the post and went back out to the flag. A little zig pattern, a 17 yard pitch, and he beat Cleo Miller. Here's the try for point by the Illini, and it is up. And it is good. It was kicked by John Kelly. Took it by Chris Ciampeco. This is Super Football Saturday night on Turner Network Television. Brian Youngans will kick it off. Jeff Wheeler and Terry Rogers are the deep men. Skip, that was the first TD in the fourth quarter. Nebraska has given up in the last seven games since they played Missouri last year. Missouri lost today to Texas. Youngans kicks it off. It's going to bounce around a little bit and may get out. No, it takes a bounce. Wheeler fields it at the 20 to the 25-yard line. And that's where Nebraska will set up shop. Jason Gard, a freshman from Lawrenceburg, Indiana, made the tackle for the Illini. First and 10, Nebraska at the 25-yard line. 9-24 remaining in the game. There's the young quarterback, Menkhausen, who engineered the touchdown drive. Let's see who Nebraska has a quarterback now. There's the scoring drive for Illinois. Tyrese Knox is still in there with Jeff Wheeler. They're the running backs. Nebraska's used 12 different men to carry the football tonight. Wheeler gets the call and gets about three yards. McCathorn Clayton is in their quarterback. It'll be second and seven from the 28. Brian Birchfield out of Indianapolis, Indiana, made the stop for the Illini. A 235-pound freshman. Clock ticks at 9.05 left. Southern Cal and Washington next week. Mm -hmm. Mel Proctor will join Paul Horning for that one. It's Wheeler again, and he's across the 30 to the 33-yard line. Jeff Marklin, Ray Hairston in on the stop. It's at the 33 and picked up a five, and it's third and two. In the third quarter, Eastern Illinois 32, Southern Illinois 7 today. Willie Griffin and Rod Smith check into the game at receiver positions. Possession play, third and two, quarterback keeps, and he's thrown for a loss at the 30. First time tonight they got the option for a loss. Sean Jones, the nose tackle, made the stop, and Nebraska's going to have to kick with 8.08 left in the game. Take a look at the replay as the Illini Really get the option play here. And of course, a good move from the inside from the nose tackle. Sean Jones, a big senior. Got the sack. So Nebraska, I think for the second time tonight, will kick. Third time tonight, they will punt. John Croker will kick it. Daryl Usher is the deep man for Illinois. He stands back at his own 29 yard line. Good snap. Croker gets it away. Almost blocked. Usher fields it at the 36, cuts inside to the 40, keeps his feet good run to about the 44-yard line, and Illinois will set up there. Let's go back to our Atlanta studios and see what Kevin Slayton has to report. Kevin? Cousin brings his Illinois team to the line of scrimmage. Seven and a half minutes remaining. Ray Wilson, the single bat, back behind Menkhausen. And the give is to Wilson on the draw, and that didn't fool Larry Pete. He just caved him in, the big 280-pounder, way back at the 40-yard line. There he is. They haven't been able to run at all. 
There's a tired little lady. They mark it at the 39, make it second and 15. Illinois has rushed for just 25 yards. Today. Well, there's the story of the game. Again, Wilson the single back. I bet they don't run the draw again. Nope, Menkhausen to throw, and he feels some pressure, and he's sacked way back at the 28-yard line by John Marco, a 230-pound left end out of Bellevue, Nebraska, sophomore, and a third-unit performer. Well, Menkhausen had no shot. Dropped straight back into the pocket. Guy was covered, and John Marco comes in from the blind side for the sack. Third and 24 at the 30. 6.25 remaining. There is no joy in Champagne tonight. Mankhausen has time and airs it out. Way he can air it out too. He yeah. overthrew everybody. That ball landed at the 20. He threw it from the 25. That's a pretty good toss. Williams, Stephen Williams was the intended receiver, but he had no shot. And it's fourth and 24. And Illinois will relinquish the football. Chad Little will kick it. Terry Rogers, one of the deep men. And Rod Smith, the split end, is the other. Little gets the kick away. Pretty good one. Rod Smith at the 33, 35, 38 yard line. So Nebraska has it first and 10 at the 38. It's Zupke Field here, and there's the guy who coached Illinois for oh, what a famous all coach. those what years. A famous name in college football, Robert Zupke. Seven conference championships, four mythical national championships. Illinois head coach for 25 years was known as the Little Dutchman. Ray Nelson split wide to the left, Smith to the right. Clayton, the quarterback, pitches it back, and Rogers gets to midfield. Rogers had a pretty good night. Of course, uh, nobody touched him until he got the first down. Just tremendous blocking. Let's check up on Rogers here. He's got about 40, 43 yards on 11 carries. That was good enough for a first down. They mark it at the 49-yard line. First and 10 at the 49 for Nebraska. Dana Brinson and Jason Gamble in the game for the Cornhuskers. Now they just continually substitute and lose no quantity when they do so. Brinson splits to the left. I formation. McCathor and Clayton still quarterbacking the Huskers. He gives to Tyrese Knox, his fullback, and he booms his way down to the 35-yard line. Knox out of Daly City, California. Mark Kelly, the free safety, second unit free safety, makes the stop for Illinois, but they move the chains again. First and 10 for the Huskers. They just keep on grinding. They're at the 35-yard line. There's the time remaining in this game. It'll be a better one next Saturday, a much more closely competed game, Southern Cal and Washington. Mel Proctor and Paul Horning will have it for you on Turner Network Television. At the 35, Rogers gets the call. He's tripped up and gets only a yard. Back to Atlanta and Kevin Slayton. Kevin? Oop, we got a technical problem. We'll get to Kevin momentarily 505 remaining Brinson is split wide left gamble to the right second down nine yards to go the give is to the fullback again and Tyrese Knox is inside the 30 down to the 27 yard line that keeps the clock rolling and that's probably just as well for Illinois Kurt Griggis made the stop a freshman out of Hickory Hills Illinois it's third down three yards to go Some of the fans head for home here. Knox and Rogers in the backfield. Along with Ray Nelson. Again, the give is to the fullback. It's Knox banging his way to a first down at around the 23-yard line. Well, they got they got a lot of backs who can run the football, I tell you. Very impressive. They impressive. just keep grinding. Of course, they got a mismatch here, but they still look good. You could tell the good teams, class. A lot of 
of good football players dressed in red. 409 remaining. This time Clayton keeps it. He's hit, spun down. Neil Walner was the first to hit him. Sam Yakovlev helped out on the play. Second down. Ten yards to go. Nebraska just keeps grinding it out. 340 remaining. Ray Nelson splits wide to the left. Clayton fakes, keeps. Now pitches beautifully done. It's Rogers at the 10, at the 5, at the 2. I want to tell you, that was tremendous athletic play by Mc McCarthy and Clayton. Boy, he ran the option beautifully. Watch him get rid of this football. He sets it up for Terry Rogers here. And this is the quarterback move. Watch this way. Comes inside and watch him make the pitch just as he's getting hit. Boom. Ellsworth that's perfect. Him. That is, that's the way to run the option. He almost got it in. They're going to mark it at the three. Rogers in nine carries, 62 yards. His daddy's watching. I bet he's smiling. Imagine. First and goal at the three. This is with the third unit, folks. The give is to the fullback. And Tyrese Knox gets very little. Now we've got Kevin Slayton back in Atlanta. Kevin, go ahead. All right, Skip. Thank right, you. Kevin, that would be a shocker. Absolutely. Second down. Goal at the three-yard line. Well, they got up for their first game against Texas A&M. They were underdog. They pulled the upset off at home. It looks like they've gone to sleep a little. They give to the running back again. Again, it's Knox, and again, there's nothing for him to do. Neil Walner out of Mission Vieja, California, made the stop. White really has good luck recruiting out in that part of the world. I imagine. Well, he was out he there. He was out there a long time. He was out there at California, and, of course, he's got his contacts where the population is and a lot of great football players from California. You know what's wrong with her? No. Nothing. <laughs> Third and goal at the two-yard line. As our buddy Joe Dean would say, stronger than new rope. All right. The give at the goal line. Did he get in? Yes. Touchdown, yes, Terry Rogers. A little ice in on the cake. Rogers scores with a minute 52 left in the game. It's 58-14. All right. Looked like he got a little help from some of these blockers on that. Looked like he was stopped about a yard short. Then he surged forward. Let's take another look. Ground level. Here he comes. Looks like he's hammed up here. Well, and I think in a little. The line I helped him. He moves up to 64 yards. Scores his first touchdown. Now watch. He gets hit from behind. And that causes him to get in. Here comes 75, hits him from behind. The Illinois guy trying to make the tackle pushed him in the end zone. Craig Snettler kicks the extra point. It goes to 59-14. We'll be back. Deep for Illinois. Craig Snettler is going to kick it up. He's a junior out of Battle Creek, Nebraska. And it's a fine kick. It is Boyce off at the 15, at the 20, at the 30, and he's hemmed in and knocked down at 36. Gary Schneider made the stop. We're winding down here with a minute 46 remaining. The executive producer for TBS Sports is the Big E, Don Ellis. Tonight's game has been produced by Michael Lardner, directed by Tom Smith, Mark Johnson, our technical director, Kenny Nolan, our associate director, Scott Cockrell, our associate producer, and the rest of the best, the TBS crew. A minute 46 remaining. We all survived Russia. Some better than others. The pass is complete. Out at the 45-yard line, Stephen Pierce with the reception. Hey, this kid's got a good arm. Brian McHausen, he throws it. You're going to hear from this kid. And he appears to have a lot of confidence, yep. which you really have to have. Against a team like Nebraska, you've got to throw those short eight or nine, ten-yard patterns until their sum opens up because it gets so much pressure. He's now five of 11 for 94 yards as he misses Pierce on that one. A minute 20 left in the game, 59-14. Illinois has been taken to the woodshed. 
Pierce caught what nine passes tonight. Nine passes for 75 yards for Stephen Pierce. 120 remaining. James Gordon flanks left. Menkhausen Bart signal is taking a long time here. And he took too long. Delay a game against Illinois. That's youth. In rushing tonight, Nebraska 439 yards. Illinois 25. That's amazing. That is really amazing. Yes, sir. UCLA, as expected, off to a lead against San Diego State. Texas A&M had little trouble with North Texas. Third and six from the 40. Menkhausen in the pocket. is run out of the pocket and is sacked. Blitz. Way back at the 25. It was again Larry Peake. Boy, you, he's had a super game and he never gets to play. He's playing behind Danny Noonan. We haven't heard too much from Noonan tonight. That's not because he is a bad player. It's just that he takes three guys when he's in the game. He hasn't played that much tonight. It's been that kind of game. So Chad Little is in the, in the kick once more. Rod Smith, one of the deep men. And Terry Rogers, the other. Little's kicked well tonight. He's averaged 42 yards. This one is a little shorter. And did he call for a fair catch? No. Rod Smith made the play and ran out of bounds. Third, just a 31-yard kick. Well, he's probably tired. Just 39 seconds remaining. And your boy, Howard Schnellenberger, won tonight. How about five, that? Six. All right. Penn State first opening it up first, against Boston first College. First points they put on the board three games tonight. So Penn State easing over. 39 seconds remaining. Ray Nelson flanks left, Rod Smith right. Fumble, loose ball, and I think Illinois has it, and they do with 34 seconds left. Chris Carpenter comes away with it. Carpenter out of... What must be a great time, Carey, Illinois, 6'6", 235 pounder. Gary or Carey? Carey, C-A-R-Y. So Illinois gets it back with 34 seconds left, and they'll be filling the air with football. Yes, sir. Brian Menkhausen leads them out. And as expected, he's going to throw, and he misread the pattern run by James Gordon. Or James Gordon ran the wrong pattern. Oh, hard to One tell, too. Yes. I always give the quarterback the edge there because he did call the play. And you always give the quarterback. He written well. Yes, he really he used to be a quarterback. That's right. Exactly. That's why I said it. Second down at the 39-yard line. 30 seconds left. Ray Wilson, the single back behind Brian Minkhouse. He throws a look-in pattern. It's complete to Gordon at the 35-yard line. Blake Henning made the stop. They gained only four. It's third and six at the 35 with 12 seconds remaining. Minkhouse and looks has time. Now he's run out of the pocket. Now he's going to run. He gets to the 30, and he will get out of bounds at the 28-yard line with two seconds left. Cleo Miller ran him out. So we'll have time for one more play in this one. Paul, always good to see you. Great working with you. Good. Again, enjoyed it, and I wish we could have had a little bit better game for the folks at home, but next week... You will. We will. We'll have a good one next week, and uh, it's getting later and later at LSU. Look here, 21-12. Oh, that is a shocker. Yes, it really sir. is. And another player has heard a... Nebraska player down. It's Jeff Jamrog. The right end out of Omaha, 225 pounder. You really hate to see a guy go down with two seconds left in a 59-14 game, but that's what happened. He was blocked by Stephen Williams. There's next week's game. Mel Proctor, Paul Horning will have it for you. Seven o'clock Eastern time on TNT. We'll look at it again and see how this injury occurred, Paul. There it is. Watch Minkhausen. He's going to get out of bounds. There's a peel back block. 
knocked in to Jamra right there. I think he got it from behind. He's able to walk off under his own power, which is very good news. Two seconds left. We have time for one more play. And Jamrog is just going to head on back to the locker room. So the last play of the game is about to unfold. Menkhausen leads him out. He'll throw this one into the end zone, or at least try to, I would think. They flood the right side. There's the throw. It's jump ball and incomplete. And your ball game is over. The Cornhuskers of Nebraska rolled impressively Illi over Illinois, 59-14 the final. This is Super Football Saturday night on Turner Network Television.